All right, so uh, welcome one and all. Um, I'm Dave Waldron, a uh, lecturer in history at Fed Uni, and this is going to be a fun night tonight doing a live play example of Chaosium's role playing game, Call of Cthulhu, a fictional horror game set in the world of H.P. Lovecraft, but this time based in Ballarat. So you're going to see stories based around Ballarat characters and personages set in locations around Ballarat and indeed featuring a dark story of a, an actual cult that operated here in the late 19th century known as the Stevenites. Now, you see too, we'll be using maps and locations such as the map of William Bailey's mansion and of course talking about some of the skullduggery with William Bailey and the Lemont family. So it is a fictional story, but one that is woven around historical sites, people, places, and events. And perhaps it can let you draw the boundary between fact and fiction. And I shall now hand over to our storyteller for this evening, uh, Shannon. Excellent. Uh, now, before we do begin, I would like to acknowledge that we are playing this game on the uh, unceded lands of the Wadawurrung people. Uh, and I pay uh, our respects to their elders past, present, and future. Uh, now, this story is a work of fiction set in the 1890s in Ballarat as it transitions from a gold mining town to a centre of industry. We have used real locations and have even made use, uh, as you can see, of original floor plan documents for some of our maps for our locations. Uh, William and Emily Bailey, Thomas Learmonth, the Stephenite cult and all of our investigator characters sitting at the table here are based upon historical figures from the period. I suppose I should say inspired by historical figures from the period. Any history buffs out there, you probably will notice we've changed a few small details in order to make this fit our narrative and this gameplay uh, a little bit better. Uh, it's also worth noting that I'm not an extremely experienced law keeper with Chaosium's system of Call of Cthulhu, um, and Chaosium has offered us some really fantastic support, um, and the, the system can be very in-depth, but it's also possible that it's very simple in some ways, and those basic rules, throwing a D100 for almost everything, for example, keeps things quite simple, uh, and allows for players and law keepers to jump in even with a basic knowledge and understanding of the rules. I'm sure you'll uh, enjoy seeing us picking this up as we go as well. Uh, before we begin properly, I would also like to thank some of our supporters. Uh, Gary Fay and the team from Chaosium. We are joined by Michael O'Brien uh, this evening as well. Uh, Guff Ballarat as our local sponsors. The Ballarat Library for facilitating and the Town Hall for uh, hosting as well. Uh, the Drongo and the Crow, our musical accompaniment, uh, Liam and Mark over there as well. Thank you very much, fellas. Uh, and SLC. Uh, SLC for their tech expertise, Federation University uh, for their support, and of course, our players and our stage manager, Kira Lee. Now, to begin. You have all been requested to attend Mr. William Bailey at his imposing Gothic mansion on Drummond Street in town. Ooh. The house towers over the surrounding buildings, its windows shuttered and ivy creeping over the walls. For such a new and opulent house, as you approach, you may note it is strange that it shows such signs of neglect. And we'll get you guys <laughs> How very mysterious. <laughs> One way or another, you have all found yourselves welcomed into the parlour of this home at precisely 8pm. Rather oddly, you are welcomed not by a staff member, but by a distracted but personable woman who introduces herself as Miss, Mrs Emily Bailey. She hurried you each into the parlour, invited you to take a seat, and then promptly disappeared, assuring you that her husband would be with you shortly. As you all make yourselves comfortable in the parlour of the Bailey Mansion, which you can see is on the ground floor at the front here with a lovely window, seeing out to the street. As you make yourselves comfortable in the parlour of the mansion, you cannot help but notice an odd atmosphere in this house. The air is thick with tension and a faint smell of Perhaps incense, you can't be certain. The silence is only broken by the occasional creaking of the old wooden floorboards. The room itself that you're in is spacious and grand with high ceilings and ornate mouldings. The walls are adorned with paintings and sculptures, many of which look quite valuable. The bookshelves that line the walls are filled with volumes on history, philosophy and natural science, indicating that Mr. William Bailey is a man of learning and intellectual curiosity 
or at least he would like to be seen as such. As you wait for Bailey's arrival, I would all like you to, around the table, introduce yourselves uh, to the audience and indeed to one another before we begin. So please, first to you, Mr. Thomas Montague. Evening all. Um, I am Detective Thomas, Thomas Montague, uh, if the outfit didn't give it away. Uh, I'm a um, detective here in Ballarat. I've been uh, sent here uh, to look into this investigation, shall we say. Um, I've been sent over from England to show the Australian police how modern policing is going back in England. Um, and as you can imagine, it's put a fair few noses out of joint, which is why I feel I'm here doing this investigation with this eclectic group of people. Thank you very much, Detective. Good evening, everyone. My name is Bella Guerin. I am a medical enthusiast a well-educated woman. I'm in fact the first woman in Australia to receive a tertiary education. I am also a feminist and a well-known figure within the women's suffrage movement. I was invited here this evening to see to Mr. Bailey's uh, physical state and to make sure that he is mentally healthy and as fit as a fiddle. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce myself. I am Mr. James Curtis. Oh, here we go. You may know me quite well. Uh, I uh, have my finger in quite a few pies around, uh, uh, around the Ballarat. Uh, I may call myself a shrewd business person, if you'll uh, forgive the, the vulgar term. I am here today, I, uh, among such highly esteemed company, presumably because of my in-depth knowledge of the occult. I am, of course, a spiritualist. I am here to see, ladies and gentlemen, what these people cannot, for they are blinded by their eyes. But that's... Yes. What does that even mean? Uh, my name is Bella. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm Clara. <laughs> been drinking, I, madam. I, I have, I have uh, been absolutely um, dumbfounded by the words that come out of your mouth, so I'm a little confused. I do tend to have that effect on people. Uh, <laughs> So I have had experience touring and uh, debunking fake fakes and charlatans like yourself. So I have been to Ballarat before, and so I'm, I'm here to offer my expertise. Uh, and that is, uh, well, I'll tell you what it won't be. It won't be uh, spirits and it won't be ghosts, I'll tell you that. You may mm. be in for a rude awakening here, madam. <laughs> Very good. Now, as you as are, as I said, please, eclectic. <laughs> as you are um, having a lovely, polite conversation in the uh, drawing room, the lower drawing room of the mansion, I would like you all to make a spot hidden roll. Now, if you look at your character sheet, spot hidden is one of your skills. I believe it is yes, towards the top right of your skills. And let me know uh, whoever made a success or a hard success. Now, a success is to get a roll of underneath what your skill is. A hard success is to get half of that. And an extreme success is to get approximately one-fifth or lower one than quarter. your skill. One quarter or one-fifth, depends which way you're doing the rules. Yeah. I got a success. A success? <laughs> uh, absolutely not. Not, not a success? Not even close. Uh, uh, not, a success. <laughs> not a success? I also failed, but just by one. So mm. I'm wondering if I could push the roll, please. You would to push the roll? Yes. So again, so there are two ways if you fail a roll to make it a success. One is to push the roll, which is you re-roll. And if you fail, there are consequences. You can't always push a roll. Uh, sometimes instead, you would um, just spend some luck. So you have your luck statistic. Uh, you can make luck rolls, or you can spend a point of luck to bump up by however many points. Might be worth using luck. Using a luck. So a single point of luck will make that a success. So those of you who succeeded notice a couple of extra things. Uh, you notice some concerning clues in the mansion's parlour. The interior, though lavish, is unkempt and appears to have been neglected, as though housekeeping staff have been unable to complete their regular duties. Goodness me, this is a rather unkempt home, don't you? You haven't noticed this. You didn't this. notice this. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it's lovely? Uh, there are oh, several... A beautiful <laughs> home this is! Charming home! <laughs> well, there are... I, the, the paint's peeling in that corner. There are several uh, empty glasses which contain the remnants of wine and spirits that have not been cleared away, and a well-used tobacco pipe lies unceremoniously upon the table by a well-used ashtray. Well, I think, Clara, we can say that you were wrong. There are spirits here. 
<laughs> I told you. <laughs> Those of you that succeeded, I'd like you to make a psychology roll, please. What is that under? Oh, yeah. Under psychology. <laughs> nope. Also no. Also no. Uh, you, you're unable I'm to make studying. any. You're unable to make any further uh, presumptions based on the the room around you. But it certainly does seem quite unkempt, very very out of sorts. And you do notice that you haven't seen any members of staff, only uh, Mr. and Mrs. Bailey themselves, which is very strange in such a. And Mrs. Bailey was looking a little dishevelled. Certainly, think? yes. Very yeah. unkempt. Very unkempt. Uh, stressed, you might say. Now, as you are sitting here, I'd also like you all to make a listen check, please. Uh-oh. Oh. Where's oh. listen? Fail. Failure? Yes. Did anybody succeed? I Where succeeded. Is it? You succeeded? I succeeded. Where is it? Uh, uh, there it is. There you are. Maybe I should put my glasses on. <laughs> uh, I did not. <laughs> okay, so only Bella Guerin hears this conversation, muffled conversation happening from through the wall. You hear the voice of Mrs. Emily Bailey. Why bring outsiders in? I am sure it has just been our imagination, or, or perhaps some prowler. There's no need to take this any further. With a gruff male voice following, I have had enough of this, Emily. I know what I saw, and I want to get to the bottom of this. I will not have my enemies or some prankster play the fool with me. Enough. Now I must speak to our guests. Now make yourself useful and find my keys. I am sure I had them on me only this morning. After this altercation, uh, the other three of you only hear a muffled sound. You're unable to pick out any words. Uh, after this altercation, the door opens and Mr. William Bailey enters the room. He is dressed in a tail suit with a loosened bow tie, top button of his shirt undone. He looks significantly gaunt, haggard and tired, perhaps not having slept well in some days. He approaches all of you. Mr. Bailey, you look marvellous. Ah, uh, th thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Mr. Curtis. That's yes. right, sir. Uh, the, now, now, I welcome you all to my humble abode, albeit under rather unsettling circumstances. As you are all aware, I have been living in fear for some time, and I cannot express how relieved I am that you have all agreed to come here uh, today to help me solve the mystery that has been plaguing me. We, we are here today to help relieve your stress and to assure you that all is quite Thank you very much, Miss Guerra. We're here to work out what is happening and to solve any crimes, if there is any. Of course, uh, Detective. Thank you. Now, now uh, the past several weeks, we have suffered numerous break-ins, as you would be aware, uh, Detective. Uh, I have bolstered our security and staff, but to no avail, and, and I have seen fit in the previous few days to, well, to dismiss them, uh, as they were not helping at all. If you have all kept up with the local papers and gossip, you may understand why I initially believed and I am still not convinced this is not the case, that the Learmont family was behind these break-ins mm. and these stalking figures on my manor grounds. But the longer this went on, well, the more glimpses I caught, the figures I saw did not seem to be human. Now, well, they were wispy shapes, apparitions, sometimes within this very room during the late evening. I have begun, despite myself, to suspect a more sinister explanation for my troubles, and after a terrifying encounter last night, or perhaps even in the early hours of this morning, on a patrol of the house, as I again could not rest, I saw a dark, shadowy figure on the stairwell, and I fired shots from my revolver, and was horrified to discover that the rounds went straight through the figure to damage a statue of St. Michael, positioned directly behind it. Naturally. In the moonlight, what I swear, this? Uh, it must have been past midnight, uh, perhaps one o'clock in the morning. The witching hour, you say? Yes, well, some may say so. Mm. My wife made the same observation, in fact. In the moonlight, I swear, this figure was translucent and I could see the stairs beyond it. Its face, its face left me distinctly unnerved and its hideousness is a difficult thing to describe. Since then, I have been unable to sleep or rest and I am often compelled to patrol the grounds at night my loaded revolver, my only comfort. Now, Detective Thomas Montague. Yes, sir. The Ballarat Police assure me that your expertise in investigating criminal cases is second mm. to none. Your insights will be invaluable to me, I hope, despite your lack of local experience. James Curtis. As a spiritualist, I believe that you will be able to help me understand the supernatural forces that I may or may not have been grappling with. You are in good hands, my good man. Indeed, sir. Your knowledge of the paranormal is well known to my dear wife, who I believe you have indeed met once before. Indeed. I look forward to learning from you, sir. Balaguerin, I am grateful for your presence here. 
Now, I believe that the analytical skills and attention to detail that my colleagues at the School of Mines tell me you display will be invaluable to me. Your scientific expertise may be essential in unraveling the mystery that has been troubling me. I am an open-minded man, but I am not given to ignoring the possibility of a logical explanation. And on such a note, Ms. Clara Baldwin, the magician and skeptic, I understand that you firmly do not believe in the supernatural. In I fact, do not. No, no. In fact, my wife and I saw you perform some time ago oh. with your husband. Yes, a terrible shame you will not be performing together again. Uh. Although I am not convinced what I have experienced can be explained away so commonly as an illusion, perhaps your in-depth knowledge of hoaxes and magical effects will prove me wrong. I hope I can help. Now, I believe that with all of your help, we will be able to uncover the truth behind these events and bring an end to my discomfort. I will, of course, reward you all significantly for your time and efforts and cover any reasonable expenses you may incur. Please, investigate as you will. However, I do ask you refrain from entering our private rooms on the second floor there has been no odd sightings here. I do not wish to have you waste your time. Thank you. Sir, With that, yes, yes. Have you uh, considered that these apparitions you say uh, yes. you've experienced seeing, these visions, uh, perhaps they are hallucinatory in nature? Uh, that is quite possible. Potentially brought about by... Excessive drinking. An overindulgence in strong spirits. Well, now I say, I well, I... Uh, I perhaps... Um, I understand that, and he he pie. looks he looks about his room and, and sees that he has left these things scattered around. Look, I I understand what it must look like, but I assure you, this imbibing of alcohol is something that is a recent development that I have. You must understand, I have not been able to sleep for some weeks. May I investigate the tobacco pipe and make sure that it is in fact just tobacco? Certainly. Uh, make a what role would you suggest? You could use forensics, or perhaps. Uh, Chemistry or something? You haven't got chemistry, do you? No. Ah, I'm happy with forensics. Yeah. Um, that is a hard success. It's a hard success. It's just tobacco. It is just yes. tobacco. Uh, okay. I would tell you what brand the tobacco is if I knew what brands of tobacco we sold in the 1890s in, in Victoria. <laughs> um, but that was an excellent role. You can, you can tell how long ago this was smoked uh, yeah. this day, in fact. Uh, and you could certainly tell it's a high quality tobacco. Uh, he buys the best, but it is just but tobacco. It is just tobacco, not, not laced soaked with anything. Not soaked in laudanum or anything like no. that mm -hmm. this time. Yes. May I ask, Mr. Bailey, as well, have your staff experienced uh, similar occurrences as yourself and your wife? The staff and my wife uh, have all noticed strange things, but nobody else has seen anything. Only myself has seen these ghostly apparitions. I do have a question. Yes. Uh, did you yourself have a hand in designing and building this house? Uh, yes, I did, in fact, yes. Right. Um, I'm, I'm wondering, because I, I have skill in uh, designing uh, stage props that have false walls oh, yes. and uh, uh, trapdoors and whatnot, uh, did you... I wonder if you had built any of these things into the house. Are there any hidden well, yes. passageways that we should know about? Certainly not any hidden passageways. Uh, however, there are, I, I will admit, there are several uh, hidden panels uh, with, with, with things stored in them. Uh, for example, I have a safe stored underneath my staircase in the main hall. However, there is no way for anybody to sneak in using these panels. I certainly don't think they are at all connected to this mystery. Now, now look, I am very tired. I would prefer to leave you to your investigations. Uh, you do have free roam of the grounds and the manor, but I do ask you allow me some time to rest in my chambers. Uh, yes. Just a moment, sir. Of course. Um, Miss Bella, you have medical knowledge. Wearing, yes. Yeah. Um, you, would you be able to perform an examination on Mr. Bailey and just make sure that he is of sound mind? There's no other... Well, I'm not sure this is necessary. I well, certainly have sound mind. Well. Circumstances that may be causing him to see certain things, or potentially. I will. May I ask, yes. uh, privately, Mr. Bailey, have you been uh, indulging in any substances? I beg your late? pardon. I, uh, I certainly would not. Of course, I, I am uh, well. Perhaps morphine for your nerves and your sleep. Perhaps you've been prescribed laudanum. I, goodness, no. I, I am. I am a good Christian man, and I prefer not to indulge in such things unless I am prescribed by a doctor. And I certainly have not been in this case. Have you seen a doctor? Well, no. As a matter of fact, I have not. Uh, it, it's a rather difficult and embarrassing thing. You must understand for yes. a man to go and see a doctor about 
apparitions he's seeing in his house. Is that why I'm here? It is part of why you are here, Miss Guerin, yes. Because I require... I hope I do not make you embarrassed. Certainly not. Certainly, no, certainly not. Uh, but, but as I said, I, I would very much like to retire to my rooms and leave you to your work. Good evening. And with that, he heads off, presumably, to his uh, bedroom upstairs. And you are left to explore and where you would like to go. Now, there are several rooms you can see in the map behind you. You may wish to have a look around. Um, you don't have to pick a specific room, however. The gunshot itself happened on the staircase here. So you can see there is a shattered statue of, uh, of St. Michael, I believe, uh, is there with some gunshots and some other things there to see. Uh, there is the rooms downstairs that you can look through and the hallways. Upstairs, there is a sitting room directly above the room you are currently in that you may wish to investigate, and you can also investigate the grounds outside. Uh, are there no other spaces um, such as attics or basements in the building? Not that would be relevant, no. Sure. Uh, may I investigate the hallway, mm -hmm. uh, obviously for the firearms? Certainly. Um, but also, I'd like to investigate the safe. Um, the safe that he said was under the stairs. So, make a spot hidden roll for being in the hallway. Ooh, That's that is Very good. That is a, what is it, extreme success? Extreme success? Extreme. Yes. An extreme success. For an extreme success, I'm going to give you some extra ah, information. Skills. As you are looking around at the staircase, you can see there is some, uh, the, the gunshots, there's the yep. shattered statue, there's some other things that you'll have a look at in a moment. You do spot, as you're heading out to look at this, on a side table in the hallway, there is a revolver, a Smith & Webley revolver, uh, containing four rounds. Uh, with a roll like that, uh, assuming you have a closer look at this revolver, yep. you can tell it's been fired somewhat recently, just from the residual smell of, of, of gunpowder. Yep. Um, and it's not been particularly well maintained. Uh, again, odd for such a nice handgun not to have been maintained yep. over this time. Uh, you do find the hidden panel underneath the staircase, especially having been told that's where it is. You can sort of fiddle with it. It opens up and there's a, there's a big safe there that is locked. And that, that's... That's all that's there. Um, I'm not looking specifically at the safe, but more, has it been tampered with? It doesn't I, seem to be, no. I'm presuming that if there's somebody sneaking around the house on an evening there, trying to obviously break in and mm. do harm uh, to Mr. Bailey, as we've heard before, mm. um, he had a bit of a run-in with the Learmonth family. Um, and apparently they've been both sending goons to each other's estates to harass each other. Goons. Well, goons. the obvious goons. answer goons. is goons. probably goons is the most likely. Yeah, the goons is the uh, word that I got from my yes. police uh, debriefing. Well, yes, will. yes. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. Learmont's goons uh, were accounted it. for uh, last night when the mm. incident happened. There is a great, also, there is a great many valuable things lying around. If somebody was sneaking in here to steal things, they haven't done a very good job. Um, what you also find with a roll of that uh, success rate uh, is because you are in this area of the staircase, I will also give you some information uh, on the blood that is on the stairs. There is uh, blood on the stairs? Yes, so now ah, this is something I've quite interesting. Something. You notice there is a residue that appears to be blood spatters on the stairs, around about where the, where the gunshot has happened. Yes. Uh, I'm going to have you make a forensics roll in a moment. Yes. Um, because you can see the bullet in the shattered statue, there is bullets embedded in this statue. How many? Uh, there are two. Two? Two bullets, which is consistent with the revolver you found yes. with four, um, four Same rounds within it. Same calibre. You absolutely believe this is Mr. Bailey's weapon. He has fired it. These are the bullets from that case. But you do notice, as I said, upon the, uh, upon the stairs themselves, there is a residue of some kind. It looks like a blood spatter. Okay. So make your forensics roll. <laughs> Um, that will be a hard success. Hard success. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, Excellent. Yes, looking at the splatter mm -hmm. um, from Mr. Montague's personal experiences, um, if I'm presuming that they're from the bullet, um, a blood splatter from a bullet wound will have small drops because they are high velocity impacts, while, say, a fist fight, which is low velocity, will have, low, uh, mm. will have a low velocity large drops. So it certainly does seem to be the smaller drops, yes, uh, consistent with a, with a gunshot. Uh, the, you can actually see the, the, the way that the uh, residue is spread about is consistent with a revolver round passing through a victim standing just in front of the statue. However, there is nowhere near enough of this residue to have been from a gunshot wound. 
So the splatter pattern is consistent, but yeah. if somebody was shot here, there would be a lot more, yes. a lot more than this. Um, is there anything else unusual about the residue? Um, yes. Say, is there um, a break in the pattern where there was something else stood behind them? Was there um, a particular strange angle from where no, it was? Nothing, no, nothing else particularly noteworthy. However, the residue itself, you are fairly certain it's blood just from the way that it's there, but it seems odd, like the wrong texture. Like it should have been more dried by now, but it's still mm. quite viscous. Uh, perhaps somebody with scientific experience or another perspective on such things might want to have a closer look. Uh, Miss Guerin, can you have a look at this, please? I'm here now. Yes, <laughs> yes I can. Certainly, make a biology roll for me, please. You do know an awful lot about blood spatters, I'd say. Do you have uh, much experience? Modern policing. Modern policing. He I says as marvelous. he flicks through his notes to find out when they were writing it. <laughs> <laughs> How did you go? Uh, a success. Excellent. With a success, you have a closer look at this substance. Presumably you feel between your fingers, uh, smell it as well. It appeared at first to be blood. However, the colour is just slightly off, a little bit too dark. Um, and it, uh, it seems oddly viscous and slightly acidic, which is... Which is very odd. It has not begun to dry or congeal as it should have. You cannot place what this is. Perhaps there would be another perspective on this. Perhaps. Would you like to make an occult oh. roll, <coughs> Mr. Curtis? Uh, yes, I would love to. <laughs> um, I will point out, though, if you're interested, Mr. Edward Pristrovsky. I've probably mispronounced that, I apologise. The University of Krakow is currently publishing a paper on oh. blood stain pattern analysis. Hmm. I'll have to review it. Mr. Curtis, how did you go, sir? It was a success. A success. You are fairly certain fairly that this certain. could be ectoplasm. But of course, some would say such a thing does not exist. Uh, now... I would yes. say that. But before you do, Mr. Curtis, you are fairly certain that this is a very rare, rare material that appears after spirits have, have been around and ghosts and such. Ectoplasm. Ectoplasm. You are certain. I am absolutely certain. I <laughs> uh, fairly, actually... Fairly certain <laughs> that, I, that this is ectoplasm. It so, doesn't exist. I don't want to put you on the spot, but please tell us all about everything you know about ectoplasm. Ectoplasm in detail. is a residue which is left behind by spirits, most commonly, ladies and gentlemen, poltergeists. Uh, not strictly limited to poltergeists, except usually poltergeists. Uh, it is something that is completely alien to people of your disposition because... Uh, it has no place in this world. It is of another world. And because it can't be proven. If that is how you would like to look at it, then certainly. And yet, here we are looking at it. Unproven. Very good. Now, I will tell you in the interest of brevity that you have found all of the clues around about the staircase region. Hmm. So would you like to investigate elsewhere? Uh, the upstairs parlour? Upstairs parlour? Yes. Certainly. <coughs> As you begin to head upstairs, uh, you seem to notice that faint smell of perhaps incense as you entered the house begins to get a bit stronger. Oh, nag champa. Yes, the, the lack of the mingled scent of tobacco that you notice downstairs as well makes it easier for you to place it as a mixture of herbs. If anybody would like to make either a natural world or an occult roll, either or, whichever one is higher. May I higher, make a natural world? You may. You may indeed. I find where mine are. The natural world, I think, is... They're different, different. The natural world is here. Yep. I don't think you have much in the way nope. of a cult. So you'll have a 10% for natural world regardless. So that you can is a fair... I'm not well versed in herbal medicines. Mm. I had an extreme success. An extreme success. You see, don't, I don't am extremely good it. at the occult, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so with an extreme <laughs> success, this makes well sense for you, Mr. Curtis, because you are well used to these uh, scents. Uh, this smell is a mixture of herbs often used in smudging and spiritual rituals of all kinds. With an extreme success... You can smell sage, wormwood, and, with the extreme success, St. John's wort. I can smell sage, wormwood, and I believe just a hint of St. James' wort. St. John's wort. St. John's yes. wort. <laughs> That's what I said. Yes. Us using my um, knowledge from back home, sage is quite often used to cleanse a household, is it not? Uh, indeed it is, sir. So somebody here is possibly practising um, a cleansing. I would like thing. you to make a spot hidden roll, please, Belle. The worm orders... Would you expect? I would expect. More commonly used for... Brewing alcohol and such as well. Yes. yes. Spot hidden roll for Valor here. That is a... 
not very good. An extreme fail. An extreme <laughs> fail? <laughs> not uh, very good. That's all right. You see nothing. Continuing on, as you head together into the parlour itself, uh, you head in, you can see there is a table set up within some, some chaise lounges and other seats in the centre of the room. Uh, and all of you make a spot hidden roll now, please. Uh, would you like me to make that Yes, yes, one? this is a separate one. Uh, extreme fail. An extreme fail. Yes. <laughs> We're doing really well. <laughs> extreme success. Extreme success. Just a success. Just a success. Just a success. Uh, I have failed. Failed. But Very not well. extremely. That's right. So those of you who had successes, and you said you had a, a hard success? Oh, yes. Yes, yes. excellent. So, uh, what you notice on the table, there is a small burn mark on the table. Oh, by the way, feel free to have a bit of play, guys. We're doing fine. Uh, there is a small burn mark on the table, which appears to be from incense. Uh, there is... Excuse me, I lost my place here. Yes, there also appears to be wax droplets on the other side of the table, which continue dropping onto the carpet. So you believe they are wax, Bella, from what you have seen. You two don't seem to notice too much. However, James Curtis, However. with a hard success, you are actually able to have a closer look at these wax droplets, and it is not wax at all. In fact, you are reasonably certain it is more ectoplasm. Ectoplasm, just as I suspected. I am reasonably sure. The consistency is the ectoplasm from before. Of course you wouldn't think so, ma'am. You have no knowledge of such things. However, I am the expert here. Please stand back while I do my work. So the, the ghost that he previously shot has come up here to bleed. <laughs> that may well be the case, Constable. Make a cold roll, please. <laughs> <laughs> that was an extreme fail. More ectoplasm! <laughs> now... With an extreme failure, you, you think uh, maybe they held a seance of some kind here. Maybe the ghost did come here and continue to bleed. Th there's actual no reason. You can see the incense. You can see some wax. You can see the ectoplasm. It all adds up to a seance, but it just doesn't make sense. You don't know what's happened in this room. Maybe a seance, but it just doesn't make sense. <laughs> can you please uh, make... Do you have an occult skill? I can't remember. I have no occult skill well. because I don't believe in it, sir. Can you please make a Pippa. spot hidden roll? And excellent. I yes. was going to get you had an advantage if you didn't need to. You had a closer look around, and this whole idea that this is a séance, that there's been ghosts here, it doesn't sit right with you. It's all wrong. It's just it's all wrong. What you have noticed is that this substance is not real ectoplasm. This is something you've come across before. Of course I It have. is a mixture of phosphorus, shaving cream, and incense designed to look like ectoplasm. Such things are very often used by charlatans and, uh, and other unscrupulous types to convince people into thinking that a true seance has occurred. Correct. And this would be in every, t every charlatan's uh, kit, charlatan kit. You can buy them, you know, shaving cream and um, <clears throat> the, the other ingredients. It, phosphorus. It's phosphorus. <laughs> Just at the corner store, you could buy phosphorus, just like that. Um, and you can actually. Yes, uh, this is very clearly uh, a, a sham seance has taken place here. I just know it. Trust the charlatan to assume everyone else is the same. Ooh. Ooh. Very Let's well. Keep this civil, please. We're here for an investigation. <laughs> I don't want to have to label assault charges on anyone. So, <laughs> has anyone found anything solid, anything remotely useful? Well, it's rather viscous, if you remember. Hmm. It's not a solid. Oh, good lord. Good lord. <laughs> Eclectic. Now, I will again say, for the sake of brevity, you have managed to find the best of the clues in this room that you can. I believe we found the best of the clues in this room. <laughs> That's, <laughs> very good, very good. That's my line. I'm the detective. I believe we found the best of the clues in this room. Isn't your line all right? Everyone go split up and look for clues? No. You ever seen what happens when you do that? Yeah, don't split your party. Bad idea. Very well. Now you have, split up. you have investigated. So you have we investigated downstairs. downstairs. You have we, investigated upstairs. We went to the uh, the stairwell. bottom where the stairwell was. Yes. We went straight upstairs. Mm -hmm. Outside. I feel like there, there were outside. other rooms downstairs. We probably should have had a look at. Do we know any more information about uh, where um, these visions took place? Perhaps mostly, we should go to those rooms. Mostly in the rooms you have investigated. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, again, for the sake of brevity, we are at a time limit here, folks. Uh, we don't want you to be trawling through a bunch of red herring rooms with nothing in them. Uh, you can spend some time investigating the rest of the manor, uh, and in fact, I would encourage you to do so as characters, but you is don't find anything of note. Miss Emily Bailey, 
Oh, Mrs. Emily Bailey around. She is uh, presumably in the bedroom uh, yeah, with so Mr. Bailey, who is We resting. have no chance to if you interview wish, her. You certainly may. You can yes. go and knock on the door and, and hope that she comes and answers and has a, has a chat with you while you are upstairs, of course. Before you do that, wh what rooms were we told not to go in? Just the, the bedroom. So on the first floor, the bedroom's here. So the master bedroom is this one down the bottom. These two are just empty bedrooms. They're guest bedrooms. Uh, you can go and open the door and poke your head in if you like. Nobody can stop you. But again, they are empty bedrooms. There's nothing of note. What in time there. is it right now? Approximately uh, after your current investigations, I would say uh, a little bit after half past eight. And when were these visitations um, happening? Mostly mm -hmm. around midnight. Right. Okay. Doorkeeper. Um, yes. Have we come across that key that I overheard? Mr. And Mrs. Bailey. Talking no, about. you haven't seen. You can I see seen key. near the front door there is some key hooks hanging up over a small end table, mm -hmm. um, but there is no keys hanging there at this time. They're missing a key, are they? Yes, I overheard them before. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I can now write that down. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So yes, you you can go and knock on the door to interview uh, Mrs. Emily Bailey, or you can go and investigate outside. That sounds like a great idea. Emily Bailey. Yes. Very well. Yes. So you approach the door and uh, knock. Yes. Very good. A small moment, and then the door opens just slightly, and you see the very uh, haggard uh, Mrs. Emily Bailey poke her head out. <gasps> no, excuse me oh. while I find her <laughs> notes. Here we are. Uh, yes, hello, hello, good, good evening. Uh, thank you. Just, can I help you? Just be, be quiet. My husband has finally managed to, uh, to, to, to not off to sleep, and I wouldn't want to disturb him. But she, she actually comes out of the door and closes it softly behind her. Thank you, Mrs. Bailey. Uh, just had some questions in regards to um, the... Um, oh. Yes, of course. Disturbances. Yeah, disturbance. Oh yes, of course. Yes, it, it's it's given us uh, no end of grief. Uh, yeah. Have you seen or heard any of these? Uh, not 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 personally. No, I, I don't I don't know anything about it. No. <clears throat> and um, do you believe in the occult? Well, well, yes, I I, I in fact do. In fact, uh, Mr. Mr. Curtis, I, I've been at one of his shows before, and it, it was very ent very entertaining, very educational. I, I very much enjoyed um, learning from you, uh, Mr. Mr. Curtis, but. Well, I, well, yes, yes, I do, but I'm not entirely certain that's what this is. We, we um, can't be sure. No, not, not at all. But have you attempted to recreate anything that you may have seen, Mr. Curtis? Oh no, doing, no, uh, certainly not. No, no not at all. No, like no, no, I would. No. That would be uh, no. It would it'd certainly make things worse, wouldn't it? Could I figure out whether she's lying? Or make a psychology yes. roll. I like to do the same. Yeah, anybody can make a psychology like roll here. Very good. Fail. A very close I look at her success, very scrupulously. She is lying. She has absolutely, and at the at the insistence of, did you have something to do with a seance? She immediately went, oh, no, 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 very much on the defence. She has absolutely had something to do with, presumably, the seance across yeah. the hall there. If you would like to... I would like to push her. Very well. Um, going, yeah. we know you have conducted a seance mm -hmm. here. Um, who else were you conducting the seance with? Very good. Now, what you'll be rolling here is either a fast talk, a fast talk, yes. or a charm. You can use persuade, but persuading assumes you take take some time to have this conversation. Um, I will fast talk. Fast talk. Oof. That's an extreme uh, that's success. That's an extreme success. Very well. Whatever you ask, she will answer honestly. You Excellent. have absolutely, and in fact, that's with an extreme success. The whole conversation, she will spill. Excellent. Bravo. For all of you. Bravo. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, so we know that you were conducting a seance. Oh, well, um, yeah. We've seen the accoutrement in the room. Well, well uh, um, so who were you conducting this seance with? <coughs> Would you promise not to tell my husband? Yes, unless it comes in, con in conflict with this investigation, though. Well, well, very well. I. Well, of course, this has been going on for some weeks, you understand, and we have been very, very tired, very stressed, and, well, well, I was approached some, some time ago, uh, approximately a, a week or so ago, by, by a very, very handsome, very charming man who called himself Stephen. And, and he had his friends with him, he had some, some colleagues with him, and, and he said that he knew about what was happening uh, and, and that they could help us. And, well, it did take some convincing, but, but he was so, such a charming, lovely man, and... Well, I, I allowed him to come in and, and investigate, and he told me that, um, well, he told me that we were, the house was being haunted by a spirit that had been manifested because of, because of William's greed in his business dealings. Just as I suspected. And, and he said that he could hold some seances and, <laughs> and, and expel this spirit from the house, but, but that I would have to furnish him with, with a good deal of money and, 
and, and to steal my husband's key. But I would never do that. I would never steal my husband's belongings. It was the key to the Ballarat Mechanics Institute. Uh, and, and, well, I would never, I would never have that. I would never allow that to happen. But I did allow them to come in and, and hold several seances uh, over several evenings. And, well, I did see a spirit. There was a spirit there that they called and, and he banished it and he, he had a, a, a scroll which he encanted over and it caught fire and, and the spirit was expelled. But only days later we saw a spirit again. Mm. And uh, you're, you're certain that you didn't take the key to the Mechanics Institute? Absolutely certain, yes. I, I, I was able to... They demanded 1,000 pounds as payment. They said they were raising funds for their commune or some such. It took me some doing, but I was able to, 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 to gather such a sum to pay them, but I, I would never steal from my husband, not, not something that he has been held. He was given that key as a matter of honor. Hmm. I would not want him to, to lose any public face. I wonder if this description of the seance aligns with my knowledge of how they actually work. How'd you go? Uh, hard success. Hard success. The idea of standing around a table, chanting over a piece of paper which then catches fire while the spirit is expelled is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> ridiculous. I that is it. not a real seance. Do you say as such? I do. Very well. Absolutely ridiculous. What? You say, you say it was not a true seance. I, I, I will stand before you, hand over my heart. This is not a real, real seance. You have, unfortunately, my dear... You have been swindled. Oh, dear Lord. What, do you need two pieces of paper for a real seance? <laughs> Three, actually. Oh, my. Very good. Do I have to bring out the assault charges again? Look, that won't be necessary. <laughs> they would not tell me why they asked for this key, but I assume there is some book that they need from the library at the, mechanics, at the, at the Ballarat Mechanics Institute. I, I'm not sure... Why else they would want something? He seemed very interested in tomes and, and, and scripture. But I, I, I said William would certainly allow them access if they asked him, but they, they, they were not interested in asking him forthwith. I tried to protest. Well, the other day I tried to protest, and, and well, Stephen suddenly became quite, quite threatening. He was quite terrifying, in fact. And well, he seemed to know more about us and our habits and our friends than, than seems proper. And I'm sorry, he was just frightening all of a sudden. He'd been so charming. Thank you, Mum. Um, what tomb or book was he interested in? I, I, I cannot remember exactly. Uh, I, I think it was called uh, something about redemption of mankind. It, it's very, very old book. It was, well, it's rather morbid, but I believe it's the book that the Mechanics Institute has had for some time that was bound in human skin. Dum, 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 dum. Yeah. <laughs> Very, I can't understand why anybody would want to, to, to even look at, let alone touch or own such a book. Am I familiar with that specific book being kept at the Mechanics Institute? It's an extremely Ballarat? valuable book. Uh, in fact, I would say you'd have some knowledge. The, the book is called, and you would know, uh, Touching the Full Redemption of Mankind by the Death and Blood of Jesus Christ, published 1599, bound in human skin. Uh, and I do believe there is, and David, give me a nod if this is incorrect or wrong, I do believe on the inside there is something that says of mother. Oh, yes. Fantastic. Of no, not for mother, of mother. <laughs> yes. Well, the plot thickens again. Mm. It's a very morbid book. Mm. Do we need to go to the Ballarat Mechanics to Institute? To see whether it is still there. Yes, I do and believe so. Yes. I believe, yes, it could be being broken into. Um, thank you very much, Ma'am. Thank you, thank you, yes. Uh, now, now I will return to bed. Now look, you are welcome to come and speak to me again in, in a moment. Uh, you are welcome to come and speak to me again, but when you have finished your investigations here, you are quite welcome to leave and come back later. Uh, whatever is easier for you, thank but you. please allow my husband to sleep. Yes, of course. Of course. She returns to her chambers. Was that the actual picture? That was the book, yeah. Cool, there you thank go. you, Mum. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, now um, again, you may still investigate outside. Yes. Or you can not bother doing that. You can travel somewhere else, but it shouldn't take too long. Um, I don't know about anybody it else. It shouldn't. Yeah. Could look I'd, around. I'm I'd specifically like to have... looking for the key. I want to find the key. I would like to look for any signs of break-ins. 
No signs of break-ins uh, yeah. that you can find. No um, odd footprints in places that they shouldn't be. Um... That is an interesting point. Now, are you looking out the front or out the back? Um, around the whole of the building. All right, well, we'll start out the front. Make a spot hidden roll all. Can I ask how big the property is? How many uh, acres? It, uh, don't know. It's a pretty good sized property. I don't think there's a lot of land behind the mansion. It's it's very much an urban mansion. All right. An extreme success. Extreme success. A hard fail. A hard fail. <laughs> hard fail. <laughs> hard fail. <laughs> spot hidden. Spot hidden. That's, oh, yes. that's entirely that... the wrong dice. Is it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> You sure you there haven't you been go. drinking? I haven't been drinking. <laughs> Outstanding. Um, now, with an extreme success, what you find no outside... divorces are hard on people. <laughs> outside the front window of that front foyer where you were, where you were first uh, in, there are signs of footprints in the soil uh, passing outside the front sitting room window. And in Alcove in that area, you also find a small pile of cigarette butts, as though See? someone has spent some time waiting there over several evenings. <laughs> With a hard success, you can absolutely tell that these cigarettes, some have been there for a week, some look like they were there for perhaps one or two nights at the most. Uh, with that hard success, you also find below a tree in the front garden, there is an upturned bird's nest on the ground. Yeah. May I investigate up the tree then? Up the tree? Well, is there anywhere... No, how am I phrasing this? The, um, the tree, investigating the tree, is there anywhere in the tree that would give, say, a vantage point into the rest of the building as to why somebody might have been up there? Perhaps you, perhaps if you were to climb up the tree, you might be able to see in through some windows, mm. but uh, because of the curtains, the heavy curtains on the windows, you probably wouldn't be able to see much in there. Um, now, the cigarette butts. Yes. Um, as he finds his note. Forensics ontology is making its start. Okay. Um... That's a new word to me. Yep. <clears throat> I believe I've written it right. Yes. Um, Get comfortable, everyone. Here we are. <laughs> no. I was just going to say, is there any interesting uh, marks around the uh, cigarette butts where they may have been um, chewed on or anything like that? Um, um, not particularly. Uh, no. These are certainly hand-rolled cigarettes. Uh, the 1890s was very common to roll cigarettes without a filter yep. also, so it's just paper with a little stub of tobacco. Yeah. Um, not really any, any real impression Okay. Of being able to um, get these tooth marks from that. But a particular style of tobacco? Make the forensic roll. Ooh, that is a success. Yes. It's you're not entirely sure what brand it is, but it's certainly cheaper. It's not it's not Cheap Bailey's brand. tobacco. Yeah, would it be recognizable to say smell? Perhaps. Um, again, I, I couldn't tell you what brand because I don't know the brands yeah. we had in the eighteen nineties, but I'm just uh, thinking if I come across anybody who smells like this particular tobacco, I mm. will then go. I recognise that smell of tobacco. I would make that another forensics roll in that state. In that uh, state, If you remember, okay. yes, yep. uh, to, to recall that. Um, yes, uh, anybody else want to have a look around at anything in this region at I the front? It. There's you no failed. point. I well, <laughs> you could see that uh, Thomas Montague does note the upturned bird's nest. There is an upturned uh, well. bird's nest here, and there's a lot of footprints here, and somebody has been waiting an awfully long time and uh, mm. smoking <coughs> some cigarettes. Mm. Would you like a hand up the tree? I'd look like <laughs> <laughs> if you climb the tree, I'm going to have you make a death <laughs> roll. Okay, yep. I'm going to climb the tree. Montague uh, sitting <laughs> in a tree. Why, I never. Quiet, Mr. Curtis. Make yourself a dex roll, just from the start. Uh, I'm going up the tree, am I? Apparently. Yes. Isn't it clear? Uh, you know, it's up to you <laughs> if you want to climb the tree. Do you want to climb the tree? Apparently, I'm being thrust up a tree. So. All right, very well. Yeah. You. <laughs> thrust, sir. Is yeah, that really <laughs> what it sounded like? Um... Nope. 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 Uh, so you start nope. to climb the tree and you fall out and uh, you, you get a few branches up. Bala gives you, uh, Ms. Guerin gives you a, a bit of a leg up uh, and the leg up is far more, um, in fact, make a strength roll. Oh, no. Should we leave them to this? <laughs> yeah, straight to the mechanics in She started yes. it. <laughs> I succeeded. Very well. Uh, the leg up that you receive is far, with far more strength and gusto, gusto than you were expecting. Uh, thus, you don't grab onto the branch where you were supposed to, and you basically go right Just over it and over tumble it. down. <laughs> um, I'm going to have you take Good. a single point of damage. Excellent. I would like to stand up, brush myself off, and go anyway. <laughs> Shall we continue? A single yes. point of damage. Mm -hmm. uh, time you. check. Time check. Uh, it is nearly uh, nine o'clock. Very close to nine o'clock. Will the Ballarat Mechanics Institute be open at this point? You have Will a police officer with you. You can get in. We can if just you get wish. In. Yes. Uh, uh, many ways yeah. of getting in. There is still most more, of them legal. There is still more things outside for you to find if you wish. Uh, in fact, 
There is there is still an upturned bird's nest. There's still an upturned bird's nest. And there is nest. out the back of the house as well. Shall we look like under the bird's nest? Fate yes. is pushing us towards <laughs> this bird's <laughs> nest. Let's look at I this bird's nest. Flip it over. You flip it over? Yes. Okay, very well. Yes. Good. I was wanting this. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. We couldn't tell. What you find in this bird's nest is several broken, blackened eggs <gasps> with a pungent fluid spilling out of them and the fetal beings within twisted and deformed. Oh God. A mother bird lies dead amongst her eggs. Everybody make a sanity roll, please. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Just more ectoplasm. Uh, which one? Over here. So your sanity so stat is at the top. Yeah. Right. You want to be underneath it? Oh, no. No. Where is it? I'm oh, it the five. eggs! The eggs! <laughs> no. I'm allergic Buffet to eggs. Two. You may spend oh. luck if you wish. I would love to yes? spend luck. Yes? Uh -huh. <laughs> None of you make it? No. So, Bella, you are quite used to seeing odd things. You have a keen scientific mind and you are able to rationalise quite well. You take a single point of sanity damage. Everybody else, uh, roll a d3, please. That is a d6, and then you halve the result, essentially. So one and two are both one. No, that's a d4. D3. God. Roll a d6. <laughs> So that's one. Uh, one. So you take one point of damage. Right. You take two points of damage. Two. And that so you take one point of oh, damage. Oh no, I take two. I got a three. Oh, you got a three? Then you take two points so that of goes, damage. We, our sanity goes yeah. down. Your sanity goes down. Now, with only two points of sanity damage, you don't go wild. Ooh. But seeing this horrible sight, knowing that these birds... This is unnatural. This is very wrong. It's... You've never seen anything like this before. Uh, I would like you to make a biology roll, though. And I would like you to make an occult roll, Mr. Curtis. House of you up there, Thomas! He I fell down. House of you down there, Thomas! <laughs> I found a bird's nest. It's quite horrifying, really. Oh, yes. How did you go? Zero, zero, 008 is very low. Zero, zero, 008 is excellently low. Oh. Yes, that's really good. <laughs> excellently low. I really like your. Uh... It's a good thing, oh, is Low it? is a Biology. good thing. Biology. Biology. Did I not give science. you biology? Oh, there science. we go. Yes, science biology. Yes, science. stop right there. See, I can see spot hidden quite well. <laughs> Oh, that, no is, luck. that is a fail. You're not sure what this is, but it does remind you of what's inside. Now, Mr. Curtis, this does look just like the ectoplasm that you saw on the staircase, mm. but not like the ectoplasm that was upstairs. Yes. But it's, it seems more... There's more of it within these eggs. Like, if you pick up an egg, and I suggest you don't, um, but if you were to pick <laughs> up an egg and tip it out, it would bloop out quite horrendously. How horrendous. Yes. This appears to be the same... As on the, the the stairs earlier in the loft. Should yes. we should we poke Thank it you. with a stick? <laughs> no. <laughs> this is forensic evidence. So we're going to move on to the BMI. I'd like yes. to poke one with a stick. You want to leave? Yeah, I absolutely <laughs> do. I, My medical opinion the ginger. Time. Look, I found a stick. Oh, fantastic! Thank you. Are you poking it with a we stick? I'm with absolutely going to poke it with a stick. Look at that! They're getting along. Gone mad. That's yeah, she's gone mad. <laughs> she has. You poke She's it with a, with a stick. stick. Would well, you poke the egg or the the whole the whole nest? Or I'm I'm, uh, I'm going to crack the egg open. I just want to. Well, they're all already it's... cracked open. Oh, the, yes. So that's why they're so. See, the only the... thing that's oh, cracked here is you, Mum. So what? Ha <laughs> what happens when you poke the egg is that the twisted, deformed fetal remains of the bird jiggle slightly. Oh. Make another sanity roll. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> is that everybody? Or? Uh, just 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 her, those two. I know I'm good. That's you're fine. I Ooh. won't. I won't have you it take another point. It jiggled everyone. <laughs> I'm <laughs> taking this stick with me, though. Ew, Very well. Why? So, <laughs> would you like to do anything else at Bailey's mansion? Would you like to speak to Mr. or Mrs. Bailey again and go and bother them, or would you simply like to go uh, investigate the Ballarat Mechanics Institute? I think we should go to the Mechanics Institute, don't you? Very see well. if this book is still there. I would love to see this book in person. Certainly. Yes. Very well. So, what you have outside, uh, sitting on the road, uh, with, that came with yourself, uh, Detective Montague, is. Uh, a small coach, large enough for you all to sit inside and discuss as you travel. And uh, driving the coach is a young Ballarat police detective called uh, Constable Inkister, of course. <laughs> uh, and he is sitting atop the coach as you as you approach. You can give him a bit of a wave and give him your instructions. Yes. Oh, hello there, sir. Uh, where are you heading? I don't sound like that. <laughs> Who said anything My about you? My name's Inkester. <laughs> and he was a constable. It's a bit yes. of a dirty joke. All right, yeah. come on then. Here we go. Um, uh, the Mechanics the... Institute, sir. Yes, Mechanics Institute, please. Right, you are then. Uh, you lot good at running? No, get in. <laughs> Very good. And we shall spend a few minutes travelling from uh, Mr. Bailey's Manor to the Ballarat Mechanics Institute. We can have some travelling music, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So, lovely. This weather, hey? <laughs> yes, do have a conversation. We we'll have a moment while you're in the coach. Does anybody know any jokes? <laughs> yes. Yes. So, uh, what do we think about this investigation, eh? I mean, it's clear, isn't it? It's a poltergeist. I, it's certainly not a poltergeist. I, um, but it is likely a figment of their imagination, surely. I have a feeling this Stevens gentleman is uh, having them on. Mm. Um, I'd very much like to have a talk with him. Maybe we go and see them after we go and visit the Mechanics Institute. Mm. I seem to recall, uh, and I don't like talking about my ex-husband um, at all, but I seem to recall Samuel talking about um, a man by the name of William Bailey trying to get my husband to uh, give away some of our secrets uh, when it comes to... Um, uh, you know, uh, ectoplasm, producing ectoplasm on will and um, and having trapdoors and stages and whatnot. I see. Um, yeah, so mm. that is a memory of mine. Um, so I don't really have much faith in uh, this being uh, a serious uh, investigation. Mm. Mm. Yes, as I said, pre previous police accounts do say that uh, between Bailey and uh, the Learmonth family, they have been interchanging just things trying to intimidate each other sending as we've said before goons after each other mm. to intimidate and mm. break in so do we know the reason for this uh yes um mr learmonth uh had a series of mines one mine in particular uh which uh, mr bailey um i believe surveyed and yes. believed him that uh, told mr learmonth that mm. it was uh, useless and should yes. be sold off quite cheap um to a mining conglomerate uh, which Mr. Learmonth did because he was quite pleased with the price he got for a useless mine. Turned out the mining conglomerate was mostly owned by Mr. Bailey, um, who then turned it into quite a uh, profitable mine and did such a good job convincing Mr. Learmonth that it was worthless, Mr. Learmonth gave him a bonus for being able to sell it. Oh. And then he found, Mr. Learmonth found out that Mr. Bailey had done this. Now, they were taken to court, but Mr. Bailey is quite uh, skilled in legal matters. Uh, so he managed to get the uh, case uh, dismissed. So that is the start of the tensions between the family, and it's only been escalating since. Mm. Mm. Uh, at the end of this uh, discussion of that context, uh, you do arrive outside the Ballarat Mechanics oh, Institute. We're here. What you find quite odd is that you can see from even inside the coach is that there is a police presence outside the Ballarat Mechanics yeah. Institute already. Mm. <sighs> there is uh, a sergeant and a couple of constables in conversation just outside the door. Too late. Mm. Um, I presume they've already been broken into and the book has been stolen, but let's yes. go and see the lads and find yeah. out all the uh, details. As you approach, the sergeant turns around and sees you and he gives you a bit of a sideways glance. You've met this man before, not much of a conversation, but he's one of those police officers that isn't too happy to see you here. Yes. So as you approach him, he goes, oh, Detective, what sergeant? exactly are you doing here? Part of the investigations, we believed that uh, the Mechanics Institute was going to be targeted for a robbery. Well, you could have told us that perhaps several hours ago, Detective. We only just found out. Right. Well, yes, they went in and stole uh, some old book of some sort. Was it was The Redemption of Mankind? How did you know? As I said, we've been investigating and we presumed that it was going to be broken into. A tip-off, if you will. We have been investigating inside already. There's, there's nothing. The, the, the book is gone. The, the, the glass case which it was in has been smashed. Uh, it appears they forced their way in through a window at some point, perhaps an hour ago. Um, any um, other evidence around that you've been able to collect? Nothing that we can find. All right, would you uh, mind if myself and my um, associates here Certainly. come and have a look around? I'll have you all make uh, either a spot hidden or a forensics roll. We won't role play all of inside the BMI, but we'll just see how you go as in general. You can spend three points of luck if you wish to make that I was going to say, may I... Six. That's six. That's a very good success. That's, uh, Use my very good forensics success. to try and drop that down, because I would like to uh, look for fingerprints, things like that. Fingerprints? Yeah, well... Very well, yes. Uh, roll a d10 uh, yeah. and or subtract forensics. that from your roll. Yeah, Excellent. that's pretty easy. Excellent. Yeah. So, uh, in that case, what you do find, if you look around where the smashed glass is, if you dust for fingerprints, you can find some fingerprints, and you can take an impression of them if you wish. Fair enough. You can't really do anything with them right now, though. No, um, I'm not looking... I won't be able to, obviously, cross-reference them mm. now until later, but I'll point them out to the sergeant so he may cross-reference them. Um, what am I supposed they... to do with that? Well, do you not have a database, any 
criminals coming in, you take their fingerprints to you see if they've been involved. Take their in fingerprints? In the identifying marks. <laughs> you are joking. You are a man ahead of your time, Constable. Is yeah. this what's no, coming out of London? I will have you know that the use of fingerprints dates back to 200 BC in China. Oh. Yeah, well, so I'm not ahead of my time. Well, yeah, maybe 200 BC in China, they mm. like to throw dust around and get sticky, oily fingerprints off of things, but I don't see the point of doing and that here. In the here. 1600s, Dr... I can't read my own handwriting. What Nahim, a funny name. Yeah, Nahima Gru uh, used fiction, friction ridges, which are the ridges on your fingerprints, um, as observations in Europe. Um, not to mention Sir Francis Galton, uh, who is Charles Darwin's cousin, um, if anybody's interested in him, uh, is he publishing books on fingerprints and how useful they are. Oh, I've uh, read them. Yeah. Many number. Yes. You know what this reminds me of? Phrenology. It's a pseudoscience. And in fact, there's a great section at the back of the mechanics, because I am a member, of books on the occult. Um, perhaps we should work, work our way down to the, uh, the heritage reading room. Maybe we compare hands. Look at our hands. The fingerprints on there are completely different. There's loops, there's whirls, all sorts. Everybody's hands are completely different. So Sir so Francis Galton says. So they can be easily identified, but Keeper, I would like to look specifically for identifying marks, cuts, scars, anything like that that are in the fingerprints. Nothing that you can really no. notice, nothing of great note. Um, again, you can have a look around the BMI, there's no more evidence that you can find beyond what the police have, so I would suggest moving on. Uh, Any? No. Yes. Cigarette butts. <gasps> mm. Oh! Good idea. Yes, Thank in good fact. Thinking. Um, did you pass your spot in no. roll? Great. <laughs> Who did? I did. I did. You all Quite did? Fabulously. Excellent. Yep. Good question. Excellent. You don't find some. Nope. As you are looking around outside, near the window they seem to have forced, there is indeed uh, two cigarette butts by the window. Oh, Fresh cigarette look at butts. this. I better put these make straight your, into the bin. Make your roll. <laughs> Uh, that, is, that is an extreme I success. I don't think I could have got any better that's, than a one. That's a zero zero one, which yeah. is literally the best roll you can get. Uh, so it is definitely the same tobacco. Yeah, it is really definitely yeah. the same cigarette butts. Are the same right. type. Definitely in the bin. Yes. <laughs> yes. So that's what you note. Same now, where would you like to go next? Small details. Yeah. Small details link things together. We can assume that the man who was spying on the Baileys is also the man who broke in here, or one of the men who broke in here. Where would one buy this particular tobacco from? Anywhere. Uh, right. Really, really common Well, that narrows tobacco. it down, <laughs> doesn't it? Uh, so much for those small details. From anywhere. Mm. Perhaps we should head back to the mansion. I, I think I would like to have a chat with Mr. Bailey. I think that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. mm. I will say uh, you can head back to the mansion uh, and you can go and speak to Mr. Bailey. You probably won't be able to glean much more from him. Uh, but, but if you wish to interrogate him on the matter of the BMI, you may. I have a suspicious feeling we are not going to get anything else out of Mr. Bailey. Yes. <laughs> it may just be wasting our time and yeah. anyone else who may be following along. And his. <laughs> <laughs> um, you did make the suggestion of... Uh, yes, I would like to go and talk to Mr. Stevens. No, it's, his name is Stevens. Stevens. Uh, I, his, his surname is not really discussed. Ever. So, People okay. just know him as Stephen. There could be multiple Stevens. Do we there is only one located? Stephen. Yes, oh. yes. He's. Oh, uh, in fact, the police are well aware of where the Stephenite compound is. It's not that far away from Bailey's mansion. Perhaps a ten minute coach ride from uh, there, if even that long. Back to Bailey's. To the now, back um, the Stephenites have their compound uh, in, in the same end of town, uh, near Don't where the it. hospital these of days course. is. Um, <laughs> it's, it's just a big block of land. There is a house there. There's a lot of crops there. They're growing hemp. They're growing vegetables and such. A lot of the uh, members of the extremely legitimate religious group um, essentially live in tents out in the hallway. To say cult. You can say whatever you Sorry, like. Sorry, how close to the property? Like a to, matter of a block away? Or? They could probably walk to Bailey's house within 20 minutes. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right, e then. Perhaps even less than that. Constable that Inkester, way. you ravishingly dashing, handsome gentleman, you. Oh, you. Yes. <laughs> Off to uh, the Stephenite compound. Mm -hmm. And we'll have a few more moments of travelling where you can have some conversation. <laughs> Fingerprints are very interesting. Do tell us more. It's an up and coming yeah, science. I, I haven't got any more in my notes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said it was an ancient science. It is, but it's also up and coming. Oh, it can be both. 
Yes. Are we there yet? <laughs> well, you still have a moment. Anything else you would like to share with each other about your perspective on the case? I have a feeling it's these, um, this Stephen who's uh, breaking in and causing problems. Mm, um, perhaps. I don't know why you'd want the book, though. Do you know anything about the book? Do we know... Can, can we pull out uh, a knowledge of this Stephen? What do we know about him? Before we yes. even arrive, let's prepare ourselves. His name is Stephen. Very good. Now He lives in a compound called mm. the Stephenite compound, so mm. I'm guessing he's the leader. Mm. Is this compound known to the people of Ballarat? Have they been in the news? Stephen has been arrested before, ah. but he always gets out. There are several news articles, some of which we've prepared earlier. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Just here. <laughs> Have they been on your persons the whole time? No. Constable Inkester is a very um, yes intelligent fellow, and he had a newspaper just here, yes, Certainly. in the carriage for us to read. Now we won't read through these articles. There are many articles about the Stephenites and and their cult and what they did out there. Um, you can find them on on scribed or lots of different places. You can find them there. Essentially, they were well known uh, throughout the the entire Victorian colonial region. Um, at this time, Stephen had been arrested before. He always got out on technicalities. He was a very clever man. He had a lot of support from his, uh, his flock, if you will. Uh, there is, uh, you are well aware, uh, Bella, that there is in fact some people that have escaped from his cult, one of whom is currently housed at the Ballarat Lunatic Asylum uh, because that her, goes well. yes, the uh, her experience of escaping was so horrendous it, it, it broke her. Perhaps we should pay her a visit. A minor Might be detour worth it at some time. We go. A minor detour. Uh, how many people in the cult do we know? Oh. Uh, only of Stephen himself. Everybody else is not a very well-known figure. Do we, do we have a total, no, I mean number, a total in... number? Oh, yeah. uh, about 50, Ooh. you'd think. Okay. Um, uh, they, uh, uh, what do we know about the cult in terms of... Um, they live in tents. Do they live like very simple lives? or? Stephen lives in a house, and you would see this when you approach the compound. Yes. Stephen lives in a house that is quite well furnished, and he always has, he's well known for always having the prettiest young women in the cult living in the house with him, yes. while everybody else lives out of the house in these tents and covered areas. Um, would we like to detour before we actually go to the compound and talk to this young lady who's managed to escape? And just that is quite possible too, yes. Yeah, you may. Prepare ourselves so we know what we're going into. Before we do, let's say that our travelling music was towards that detour. Before we do, it is about 10 minutes past 7, which is a perfect time for us to have a short five or so minute interval. We can grab yourselves a drink, head to the bathrooms or whatever you need. And then after the interval, we will uh, return back and we will continue our adventure from the Ballarat Lunatic Asylum. There is indeed coffee and tea over in the corner there as well. So we'll leave you there, folks, for a few minutes. Thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed this so far. And we will continue in a few minutes. I feel like Hurry back. useless. I haven't... Um, Thank you. You've been hilarious. Don't worry about it. Are these guys...
the bit that's occurred to me yeah. is that The party have now arrived outside the Ballarat Mental Hospital uh, in their coach with the, the, the dapper Constable Inkister driving, of course. Uh, and so you arrive outside the, the mental hospital and there's nobody waiting outside. It's, it's the middle, it's not the middle of the night, it's probably about nearly 10 o'clock now, getting, getting on to, possibly quarter to 10 uh, as the evening wears on. Uh, if you would like to head inside the hospital to see who's in there. Yes, of course. Yes. Very well. There is somebody uh, at say, the administration as you exit, uh, as you enter the building, uh, sitting there tending to some paperwork, if you'd like to get their attention. Uh, a middle-aged lady wearing a... Good evening. Oh, uh, hello. Yes, go, good evening. Can I assist you? Do I know the name of the person? Uh, you can ask, if you wish. You, you wouldn't recognise the person. Mm. We're here... Oh, sorry, you mean the, the, the patient? Yes, yeah, we yes sorry, my apologies, yes. Her name, I got, I got confused there. Her name is Mary Wessel. You have attempted to speak to her before, in fact, and you have always been denied as, uh, as she's very, very uh, fragile and her doctors don't like her speaking to other people. We're here to see Mary Wessel. We've uh, come under investigative circumstances. Oh, I see. And she looks over and sees the uniformed police officer there. Um, well, I'm sure that would be all right, but you'd have to speak to her doctor for for approval before before visiting her. I'm afraid uh, he's not in at the moment. I can have somebody run and go and get him. It would perhaps be half an hour before he's in. 
Damn it, woman, this is a matter of life or death. We must get in there and see her right now. Excuse me? I'm sorry. I will not have you walk into this hospital and speak to me in such a way. Madam, I'm you sorry. mind your tongue. I'm terribly sorry. I this is a professional I, establishment. I, 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 uh, Who are you? Well, um, I am, uh, of course, Mr. James Curtis. Uh, you may have heard of me. I'm uh, something of a shrewd businessman, quite well known around. Uh... <clears throat> anyway. Um... You sound like a pharmaceuticals expert, sir. <laughs> He's a funny spiritualist. You, it's funny you say that, oh, actually. Yes, so much I do have yes. uh, a, a few steak. Uh, actually, never mind. Um. Now, look, as I was saying... Uh, uh, um, uh, yes. We will be quick. Um, this is, as Mr Curtis uh, did say, we are in a bit of a hurry. Uh, it is a police matter. I'm sorry, uh, con constable, quick. is it? Detective. Oh, detective. Montague. Now, detective Montague, you must understand that this is a medical institution. Thus, you police... Have no draw here. Are you aware of the Hippocratic Oath, sir? We are. Yes. Well, that means that the most important thing to us here is the health and well-being of our patients, which means that even though you wear that funny hat, sir, you are not welcome to see our patients without the say-so of the doctor. He will be here if I send someone to go and get him in approximately half an hour. We actually have a doctor in our midst. Uh, I'd like to charm her and... Um, so can we fast talk? Uh, yeah, <laughs> fast talk try. her yep. and uh, to try and uh, explain that our doctor is also a renowned expert. Um, and um, Make your fast talk. <coughs> oh no, May which I ones? I assure you. you that I, can't see I have I the say. mental, physical <laughs> and holistic health of the patient <laughs> always. <clears throat> Very well. <laughs> Did it work? Not even close. No. <laughs> now, <laughs> extreme fail. Well. Hold yours. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Blah. I'm pretty sure that's what I, 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 I did to charm Go her. So, <laughs> I, quack, again, quack. I'm not sure what you're trying to explain, but if you will not leave, I will have no. you forcibly removed by the orderlies, and I will be making, so sorry, an, I, I I will be making a report to your... Well, madam, can I, can I have a word with you in private, please? Can, I, can we just go over here? Well, she's behind a desk, but yeah, certainly. So uh, the others go away like, a little bit. Let's sneak yeah, I was going to yeah, absolutely <laughs> not. The doors are locked. Can uh, I? Uh, yeah. I was going to say, can I give them the? the you know what? Oh, okay. Can I come over here? Could you just put her in a headlock? <laughs> not I'll take her key. What are you whispering about over there? Nothing. I'm not assaulting a nurse. Um. You know what? Go. Look, mom. <laughs> money Excuse me. As in to oh, keep do her. Keep her. Do I oh. have any money oh, on Oh, yes, you? of course. You have some money on you. Absolutely, yes. yes. Um, yeah, can I just try and persuade her and go, look, we are in quite a bit of a hurry. You don't want to have us here hanging around. I mean, have you seen these two? Um, now, because you, rolled, because you rolled a success, she's yeah. not going to get angry at you for offering um, her a bribe. I haven't offered the bribe uh. yet. <laughs> ah, well then hold I was threatening her with yes. these lunatics. She's also not going to get angry at you for that. She okay. will give you the benefit of the doubt. Now, detective, yes. you must understand the position I am in. The patient's health is paramount. Mm. You can come back in half an hour. <clears throat> I don't think we're going to get anywhere with this one. Headlock. I'm not assaulting a no. nurse. I will. No. I will send somebody. No. I will send someone to fetch the doctor. Please. He will be here. You may wait or you may leave and come back but you will not be able to see the patient before half an hour has Can't elapsed. Can't you just hypnotise her? You said you knew something about the Hypnocratic Oath. <laughs> <laughs> you are very mistaken, sir. The Hippocratic Oath details that health must always be paramount. That it is the role, doctor's yeah. duty. That it is the medical professional's Good. duty. It is their you know what? sole you don't purpose. To look after the health of a patient. So it's useless in the current Hypnotism situation. Is... You don't have to explain to him. Um, he's never going to get it. He's not bright enough. Now, I beg your Detective pardon. Montague. Yes. yes. You've made an intelligence roll at my say so. Excellent. And since you passed it, you know that you can get to the compound and back in approximately 40 minutes. We should put her in a headlock. Do no harm. There are Do going to no be harm. no assault charges. All right, to the compound in this investigation. and back in thirty minutes. Yes, forty minutes. All right. so forty minutes. Forty minutes. Forty minutes. 40 minutes. Yeah. Fifteen minutes there. Was. Fifteen we minutes back. Didn't know. Ten minutes to look around. <laughs> we didn't know. All right. This back. is what investigating is about. Back to would the Would you like to go somewhere else while you wait, or would you like to wait here for half an hour? Let's go to the 
Stevenite compound. Oh, Stevenite I was compound. happy to wait, but Stevenite yeah. is fine. Well, you Go can on. wait here. We can spin no, the party if you like. Okay, well, you. excellent. Fantastic. Now you get back into your coach. You travel <laughs> some distance. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, you travel some distance. <laughs> we were uh, there first. <laughs> This is ridiculous. I think right. the diplomatic thing to do here is not have the conversation in the coach for the next moment here. <laughs> you travel some way, and you, you you find yourself outside the Stephenite Ooh. compound. We're here. I'm not there, excuse me. Yes. A quick survey of the compound will validate the stories in your handouts from the newspaper that you have, and the understanding that you have had from, from discussions with other police. <laughs> Uh, the sleeping quarters for the cultists themselves is clearly Spartan, simply in basic uh, canvas tents. Uh, and the food that they seem to be eating as you come by, there are people sitting outside in the area eating what seems to be a very simple porridge or a gruel of some kind. Uh, there is, however, a very nice house in the centre of that block of land around all of the crops and gardens and such being grown. Uh, and there are several people wandering about wearing uh, white robes in various states of, of rattiness. What you do notice is that all of the pretty young women standing around are wearing very nice, clean, white robes, and they are also wearing makeup. So you can see this all from the street as you approach. Mm. This seems quite unusual. Like a cult. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. I don't you. know what else to say. Yes. 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 This is why I'm the detective. Ah, oh, right. <laughs> Would you like yes, to approach the gate to the property? Uh, can uh, I, can I it? ask, are, are, are they, they don't have weapons on them, do they? Do, what do we Not know visible. about the Stephenites? They, You're raring for a fight, aren't you? <laughs> they, <laughs> there's approximately 50 of them at the moment, you would think. Uh, they, they grow and they shrink as a group. Uh, they often uh, wander about trying to raise money for who knows what. Um, Stephen has been arrested for kidnapping before, but he's always gotten off out of it. Um, for kidnapping? Yeah, holding people against their will, but he's always managed to wriggle out of it. Um, and uh, oftentimes when people escape, they're not interested in talking about the details, other than that it was very, very unhappy place to live for them that they noticed after they've escaped. Perhaps the pr approach here would be to... Uh are we worried? Are we, are we worried, do you think? I'm worried. Uh, no, no, that, they, that we might be overpowered? Because maybe the approach is to offer some kind of... Um, they're, not, they're not known for getting into brawls or right. attacking people, but your experience with cults anywhere, uh, they're very un, uh, unwelcoming. Un, 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 yeah, unwelcoming. Well, not necessarily unwelcoming. Unpredictable is the thing. Uh, anybody that is extremely religiously devoted to an individual human is an extremely unpredictable person. Uh, perhaps uh, we approached them with the offer to talk about um, uh, some kind of a donation mm. to um, Stephen, and that might get them on side. Yes, but when they find out that we don't have a donation. And also that you're a uniformed police officer. Uh, yes. <laughs> you said you had some money earlier. Just take your hat <laughs> off, they won't know. Turn your jacket inside out, they won't know. Is this conversation all happening inside the coach, outside the, <laughs> yeah. outside yes, the compound? Yes, it is. All right, let's, standing. let's, uh, why, let's why jump just, out. Just go and ask them questions. So just as you yes, investigating, yes, as you disembark your carriage uh, and approach the, the main gate to the compound, you see a small group of, of presumably cultists also approaching the gate from the other side. Uh, as they get closer, you recognise there are four figures. There are three very, very pretty young women, as described earlier, and there is one gentleman uh, approximately 30 years old, you would say. Very, very handsome man with a, with a dour smile upon his face. And when you approach him, he opens his arms and he says, Greetings, greetings. I am Stephen. I am the leader of this humble community that seeks enlightenment under the three-lobed eye of enlightenment, which burns like the summer sun. Please, come in to our home and make yourselves comfortable. Jennifer, Ingrid, and he gestures towards two of the girls. Make our guests comfortable. See to any of their needs. Now, how may I help you? Now, throughout the following encounter, these ladies in clean but white, uh, very clean, simple white robes, one lady stays with him, the other two uh, work themselves around you all, especially with the gentlemen. They are very touchy with you, fingers across the shoulders. They smell lovely, like lovely herbal perfume. Mm. And they are just very much, very much making you feel, or attempting to make you feel as comfortable in the space as possible. I'm going to feel very uncomfortable. 
Mm-hmm. This you isn't know. bad, is it? The, no, you, thank you. You also thank notice, you, oddly, you. that all of these young women, when you look at them closer, they don't seem to be related, but they are made up and dressed and with their hairstyle done to make them look nearly identical. Mm. Can I talk to Jennifer? You can attempt to, but you're in front of everybody and you're not going to be able to get her off to the side. Jennifer, uh, just... Of course, yes. Can I help you with anything? Would you like a drink, perhaps? Something to eat? I can get you some, some, some lovely food, some refreshments. No, I'm quite well catered for. I ask as a doctor after your help. That's why we've come, in fact. Oh, um, well, we'll presume this is happening while Stephen's having a conversation with the others. Well, well, um, y- yes, uh, we're, we're very healthy and happy here. Would you like to make a psychology yes. role? Yes. Ah. That is a success. Just a regular success? Yes. You are reasonably certain that she doesn't seem to be terrified or anything like that, but she's putting on a face. Very much so she's putting on a face. She's not as comfortable as she is pretending to be. But she's giving no outright shows of this. It's only because of your uh, keen study and knowledge of human nature that you're able to figure this out. Jennifer, may I take your hand? Of course. If you need help, you um, can tell me. Well, I, I, if you're under duress, well, you can tell me. At this, excuse me. It's never yes, good. at this, Stephen <laughs> passes his listen check and he hears this conversation and stops the conversation that Boo. we'll do in a yeah. moment and turns around and, and gr- graciously turns around and takes Jennifer by the shoulder and leads her away. Like, now, now, Jennifer, that's enough. Stop bothering our guests. Perhaps head inside and brew a new pot of tea, yes? And she lets go of your hand and uh, looks back at you over her shoulder, but then dutifully heads back inside as ordered. Simultaneously, we'll have a short conversation with the other three of you with Stephen. How can I be of help to you? Uh, I understand recently you went to the Bailey Manor. Why, yes, yes indeed. Mrs. Bailey is a dear friend and follower of ours. We have helped her find spiritual fulfilment and inner peace. And in return, she has made a generous donation to our community. I see. And to what purpose did you go to the manor? Well, unfortunately, her and her husband found themselves spiritually unbalanced. So we went and we held some very simple uh, seances, some rituals with them to cleanse the spirituality of them and their house and gain insight and wisdom from beyond the veil. Emily is a troubled woman and we have offered her our assistance. We always ask permission before conducting our rituals or entering somebody's home, of course. And yet I'm led to believe through investigations and a certain expert in the occult, uh, that the seances that you um, conducted uh, were fake. Ah, that is disappointing to hear your perspective is such. Perhaps if I could ask what has led you to this conclusion? Mr. Curtis. The fake ectoplasm gave it away. Excuse as me. Well, as the fact that, uh, uh, well, the burning paper. I mean, don't be daft. Absolutely ridiculous. It's not uh, how a seance works. I understand. I understand. Uh, now, there is a simple explanation for this, my friends. Of course, my children, some people like a little bit of theatre with their ritual. It makes them feel more involved. But I guarantee you, after that ritual, Mrs. Bailey was well relaxed and calmed after her great anxieties. Now, sometimes people's eyes are closed to the true spiritualism of these events. Can I help you with anything else? Yes. Oh, sorry, Mom. Well, well, I was just curious to know how exactly you conducted the ritual. What did you do and what did you banish? Unfortunately, the spirits grant me a knowledge and a perspective which perhaps you lack, Miss Baldwin. It's always about my intelligence, isn't it? You note that he knows your name and you did not introduce yourself. Yes, I did Um, note that. Yes. Uh, Indeed. The spirits give me access to secrets to which they find most unworthy. Like my name? (laughs) 
You are well known to ah, us here, Ms. Baldwin. Mm -hmm. What um, else do the spirits tell you? Oh, a great many things. And why is Miss Baldwin known to you? Well, of course, she is... She is among that community of naysayers with which we are eminently familiar, Detective. This next question, may I roll a psychology? Ask the um, question first. Actually, yeah. I roll the psychology first. Um, uh, uh. You can push it if you explain <laughs> to me how you're pushing it. But again... A failed pushed roll yeah. has consequences. Mm, and there it. are approximately 50 <laughs> cultists on this property. Give it a go. Yeah, we're going to do it? Do it. Yeah, do it. Go on. Right. It's quite high. It was fairly slow, wasn't it, folks? I've got a revolver. What could go wrong? <laughs> well done. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> now explain to me how you push this roll. Um, so ask the so question. My question yeah. is, what do you know about the uh, book Redemption of Mankind? Ah. That and is a to push it, um, well, go I'll, ahead. Get, I'll get his answer. Sure. But. Oh, well, that's a book with which I believe I have heard. It's um, housed at the Ballarat Mechanics Institute, is it not? Yes. Conveniently, and this is how I push it, I go, conveniently, it's just gone missing from the Ballarat Mechanics Institute after you were asking Mrs. Bailey for the key to the mm. me Ballarat Mechanics Institute. Why, that is... That is quite a shame, but certainly I was only interested in the key to the Mechanics Institute to access some of those wonderful old tomes and religious texts that they have there. I certainly would have no interest in a book bound in human skin. Oh, so you know about this book then? Oh, of course, yes. Yes, uh, in indeed, as I said, it's a... Well, well, it's an interesting piece of paperwork, if you will. So my psychology role was to see if he was lying. You're fairly certain he's lying, but again, without a warrant as a police officer, mm. the fact that he's there with 50 cultists and you have no police backup, it might not be the time to arrest him <laughs> over this. <laughs> but yes, you don't believe him case at all. Closed. Lying yeah. through his teeth. Did I get yeah. a headlock? Yes. <laughs> uh, no, no, not. No. <laughs> Stand down. All right. Um, Let's see. And um, what can you tell me about this book? Why, it's a book. It's bound in human skin. It's rather morbid. I don't know anything else. Now, please, we do have some very important things to do this evening before we turn into bed. I, I do encourage you to look around my compound, if you wish. My home is open to you, my children. I, I would like to... Um, uh, I wonder if, if, if we did look around we might find someone who is willing to talk to us mm. um, and perhaps someone who might need assistance escaping this cult. Perhaps, uh, you know, we, we could offer something there. Good idea. As a bit of a bargain. Don't, As a bit of a bargain. Yeah, don't get push it too far. Whilst we're also walking around, keep an eye out for anybody smoking or anybody who smells oh. of that tobacco because they may, may be our link to these crimes. Mm -hmm. Right. Let us search, shall we? Search around. Outstanding. Now, uh, as you look around outside, again, you can see as described, uh, there are some people working in the gardens, even though it is quite late uh, in the evening. Uh, you're looking at, it's past 10 o'clock by now, certainly, perhaps mm. quarter past or so. Um, there are still people working in the gardens. There are some herbs and perhaps some carrots and other things going along. There is some hemp fields growing out the back um, that, they, that they have going. There is the sleeping quarters, the eating quarters, and there is the house. It's actually a nice brick house in the centre. Everything outside of that house, there's nowhere to hide anything. You can look around if you like, but there's not going to be too much to see uh, unless you have a particular idea of what you want to have a closer look at. If you go inside the house, you generally won't be out of earshot of several other cultists, and the cultists allowed in the house are his inner circle. So be very cautious talking around them. So we haven't discovered any of the tobacco or anything uh, around the Make outside. a spot hidden check for outside. Or, or just ask people if they can, if we can bung a ciggy. <laughs> <laughs> and in that, that case, I would allow you easier. to do that. I don't right, smoke. Right. You would too, <laughs> wouldn't you? Uh, Seventeen that is a hard success. Ooh. I'm going to use two luck and push it to an extreme. To an extreme success. success. Okay. Yeah. Wow. With an extreme success on your spot hidden around, you do find uh, by the by the side door to the house a pile of cigarette butts that I won't even make you roll for this with an extreme success. Yeah. They are similar. They, they seem to be the same sort of tobacco, the same kind of rolling paper. 
and a small pile left there, but nobody is currently smoking that you can see. Okay. You've not been able to smell anybody that smells of tobacco smoke or anything like that? Not, not greatly. You are outside. Most people are giving you a fairly wide berth, except for those young ladies that have been told to attend upon you. Who I assume by now, um, and please tell me if this assumption is incorrect, you have sort of ushered away because they were making you uncomfortable. Yes. So, yes, there is a consistency there, but you can't find the individual. But there, these are, cigarette butts are situated by a side door. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to see if I can open the side door. Are people looking at us? Yep, everybody's looking at you. In fact, there's about 40 They're sets of eyes them. staring at you. Staring at us, all watching. Times. Yes. Oh, yes, indeed. <laughs> the door opens. The door opens freely into the uh, dining room and kitchen of the house. Fairly small house, uh, as lovely as it is. Um, you can sort of see the open area. There's a couple of cultists wearing the nicer robes, wandering about. They look up at you as you come in, but they don't seem surprised or concerned at your presence at all. Right. May I have a look around the kitchen for some of the herbs that Curtis mentioned before? Certainly. Um, you, you would say, actually, there's herb gardens outside. Mm. So they, they've got all different kinds of herbs. There are lots of different kinds. There are certainly dried herbs in the kitchen. Um, but it's not that out of the norm for lots of herbs to be there. Are you looking for the specific herbs? Sage and wormwood, yes. Sage and wormwood, there, there is... Phosphorus. You can't find any phosphorus. I would say inside here, Saint John but you Paul certainly Paul can find, uh, you can find lots of dried herbs kept around, not just for cooking, they use them for their own uh, spiritual and religious rituals. So yes, there is sage, there is wormwood, and there is some St. John's water around as well. Can we enter Stephen's personal quarters? You can if you wish. I wish. Very well. You approach <laughs> the right. doors to Stephen's personal quarters and you open. Nobody stops you. Nobody stops you. They allow you to walk into the room. Um, what you find in the room is essentially a large four-poster bed with, with curtains around it, several tables, some knickknacks and things around. Quite a nice house, in fact. It doesn't seem to be a particularly religious leader room, just a nice bedroom. Nothing out of the um, ordinary here. However, next to the bed, there is a large, heavy velvet curtain pulled across the wall just to the side of the bed. Ah. Uh, Hark, I spy a large, heavy velvet curtain by the side <laughs> of the bed. Uh, I wonder what's behind it. Yes, it's <laughs> best open it. Spot hidden. Who would like to open it? You don't need to spot hidden because <laughs> oh. it's quite close. Who would oh. like to open the curtain? I will. Don't everybody Ladies volunteer first. at once. <laughs> no, I absolutely You would like to open <coughs> the curtain? Yes. I've still Very got well. that stick, so... <laughs> <laughs> what, you see, what you see behind the curtain is a hideous altar Ooh. featuring a strange black statue <laughs> wearing a mask in the shape of a misshapen <laughs> being with a tentacle in the middle of its face <laughs> overlooking it is a hideous carved symbol of a face-like structure featuring three gemstones cut into eyes which create the impression of burning. And Gentlemen. curtain goes back. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Good lord, Clara. How did they get a bust of you in here? Everybody make, everybody make a sanity roll, please. Again. Uh, <laughs> got it. Nope. Uh, yes. yes. Extremely no. An extreme fail. Extreme fail, extreme fail. Is that an extreme fail for you too? No, but very close. Great, okay. Um, so, you're fine? I'm fine. Because you made Perfectly it? Perfectly fine. You take a D3, yep, of damage. Two. You take... I rolled a 99. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you take a D6 of sanity damage. You take a D3 of sanity damage. No, oh, but I wasn't a hard fail. That's Sorry, a you were... Yeah. But you weren't, she was an extreme fail. You know what? Take a d2. So just roll a d6 and one to three. One point. There Dang. you are. That's fair to me. Now, because you made extreme failures, you both, uh, you also now, both of you need to make a power check, which means your power stat, which is top right there on your character sheet. 29. Which would be less that than your power stat. Yes. So top that one there. So you're gonna get less than sixty-five. It's a hard success. Very good. Yes. You both made 57. that. Okay, made excellent. It. Just so just uh, you're looking at this statue in front of you. You gonna do anything about it? Do you recognize this, Mr. Curtis? Uh, I'm actually um, that's a good question. Allow me to um, <laughs> That's why I asked it. Make an occult roll. yes. Uh, it is a regular success. 
you think maybe you've seen some imagery similar to this before in some varied reading in the past. Some old pagan god of some kind. You, you can't recall the name. Mm. But he's got three lobed eyes. Mm. Do we presume that is what Stephen was talking about? Mm. Yes. yes. Mm. Do, we, do we see any... Uh, is this book here? No. Is, uh, when, when we look at the altar... Are there any drawers? Oh, you're still looking at the altar? Yes, I am. Oh, make another sanity check, please. Oh, another one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, easy. You're easy. okay, yep. I'd like to look for any hidden drawers or any um, false walls. Very well. Do you do you sort of touch the altar or around at the statue? Any of that sort of thing? With the stick. With the stick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm just going to... I'm not letting you get away with it that easily. Make a power <laughs> check. Knock that statue over Make a little bit. Make a power check. I want to get under, do I? You want to get under? It's very high. And you need a hard success. Holy moly, it's spot on. Outstanding. I made it. Outstanding. Right. 70. All of a sudden, uh, all of a sudden, Clara Baldwin freezes and her eyes roll into the back of her head <laughs> and she becomes completely unresponsive to the three of you. That's Clara. Uh, doctor. You begin to Clara. see doctor. a vision of an apocalyptic blight spreading from a viewing part of a mountain somewhere. Oh, Lord, look at it all. You see <laughs> an immense dark She's figure brilliant. stretch across the horizon of the dark, shadowy, cloudy sky. The and light. you feel the Don't most the horrible, light. horrible sense of dread. Make a uh, make an intelligence or a knowledge roll, whichever is harder for you. Not uh, intelligence, sorry, intelligence or an education. Whichever, intelligence, roll intelligence. Uh, sure. Two. Yep. Go ahead. Um, whichever is harder. You two so pass that. Just with that roll, <laughs> you recognise in this trance that the mountain is Mount Warren Hip, which is about a half hour ride out of town. Right. Unmistakable. Mm -hmm. Make another power roll, please. <clears throat> oh yeah. Excellent. Pass. You break out of the trance, but you feel exhausted. Clara. Clara. Good Lord. Clara. I'm exhausted. Um, are you all right? I, oh, you, you would not believe what I saw. Visions of uh, darkness and Mount Warren heap. Mm. And now you're seeing visions as well. Yeah, well, yes. Okay. I, I feel like drawn to Mount Warren heap. I feel like we need to go there. Can I perform a medical overview just Absolutely. to make sure she's yep. Make a medicine right. roll. <laughs> Take the stick. Is yep. it necessary? Uh, medical roll? Is this necessary? Medicine roll? <laughs> no. Nope. No, that's she's, a she's, She seems that's okay. A How bad was it? Uh, was uh, 94? Oh, she's fine. <laughs> she's fine. You think Wait. she's you, you think she's faking it. I give her a pat on the back. Yeah. She you think she's faking it to mess with the believer next to her. Yeah. You'll be right, love. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> now as you are discussing and you have this curtain open and this is all quite visible, uh, Stephen enters the room behind you with several of the larger, stronger looking members of his flock. Uh. And he very magnanimously says, Ah, detective, dear friends, dear children, I'm afraid now I must ask you to leave as you have been making some of my children uncomfortable. <laughs> now, if you would wish, wish to return in the morning and look again, I ask, Detective, that you come with some form of warrant. We will, we will leave quietly. Thank, Thank you. you. I think Very we can good. take him. No. They, uh, <laughs> they lead you to the gate, uh, quite several of them, about a half dozen cultists following you, and they close the gate and then they lock it loudly yes. behind you. We're walking. Um, I would like to sort of pat my coat pocket mm -hmm. and go, ah, oh, I appear to have lost my tobacco pouch. Do you, do you folks know where to get some good tobacco around here? I believe mm -hmm. there is a store in town that is still open at this hour, Detective. Which, which store do you use? I, I... Why, oh. mostly we, uh, we, we live off of kind donations and such. We are not picky with what we uh, have. Not many of us smoke either. We find it dilutes our connection with the ethereal. Yeah. Fair enough. Any, anybody around here that does smoke you might be able to recommend a good tobacco? Perhaps you could ask your very good friend, Mr. Bailey. <gasps> good evening, detective. Evening. And with that, the cultist sends Stephen head back into their compound <clears throat> and into his house. So where would you like to go next? Would you like to continue along ah. back to the asylum? 
the way I see it, yes. we have three options. We can go and confront Mr. Bailey, who clearly he's been here smoking. Oh, well, no, 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 it's no, not no, his no. tobacco. It's, not his it's tobacco. the same tobacco that was found outside the window. Well, but was that's what Mr. I mean. Bailey himself it. in the tree watching this well, seance? No, because with we his know wife. Mr. Bailey smokes a pipe, not cigarettes. Precisely. Oh. So this is not Mr. Bailey's tobacco. Mm. It's the same tobacco that was found by an interloper at Mr. Bailey's mansion. Mm. But he may know. What's our second option? To Warren Heap. To Warren Heap! To Warren Heap! I know where my vote's going. Or oh, we can go oh, back can go. to that, that horrible old woman. Well, she did say come back in half an hour. Yes. We, mm. You did get the doctor up in the middle yeah. of the night. <laughs> They're used to it. <laughs> <laughs> Is the lunatic asylum on the way to the Baileys or Mount It's pretty Warren close Hip, to where you are now. Mount Warren Hip is about a half hour ride. Yeah. What time so, is it? The so what the time is Lake now, Wendery. It's, it's probably about quarter to 11, I would say. Yes, mm. about quarter to 11. <laughs> so... Uh, Say you go to the asylum, spend some time there. You could probably get to Mount Warren hit by, or say, midnight. How mm. convenient. <laughs> Swing past the uh, asylum. Past the asylum. asylum. Do that. Yeah. Very well. We travel to the asylum. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, as you... <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you think of that lot, eh? You're clearly not an inmate. When you They're enter terrifying. the asylum, I'm quite unnerved. When you again enter the asylum, the doctor is there to meet you. Uh, he seems a little bit unhappy that he's been awoken in the middle of the night, but he's a dutiful gentleman, uh, and he accompanies you in, uh, agreeing to allow you with the police presence, another medical professional, and two um, other people. Uh, he's quite happy to allow you to <laughs> join him to see uh, Mary. However, he becomes very clear, very, very, very uh, stern with you for a moment as you approach. When we brought her in, she was suffering from hypothermia and hysteria. She was delirious and mumbling about some pagan deity. I can only assume the trauma of her time amongst that cult and her escape must have shattered her mind. She was brought to our notice by a train conductor who called a doctor for assistance. Now, I understand that this is a police investigation, detective, but I must be clear. My patient's welfare is my utmost concern. If she becomes agitated, I will have you removed so that she can be cared for. That is why I'm going to allow our medical professional to lead the investigation. She will be best to uh, ensure your patient's needs are met. You are led into a small uh, interview room, table, couple of chairs, very sparse, very simple. Uh, a few moments later, a door on the opposite side of the room opens, and a haggard, bedraggled looking woman, very, wearing a very simple dress, uh, enters. She is assisted, as she is clearly quite physically weak, by two orderlies who don't appear to be too concerned about her escaping or becoming violent or anything like that. They are very calm. She sits down. She does not seem to acknowledge you. She's not deliberately ignoring you. She seems generally aware. Um, she definitely is struggling to focus. It is midnight, right? Is not now. It? No, it's, it's about quarter to 11 now. Ah. In fact, by the time you're there, it's about 11 o'clock. Okay. So we got her up in the middle of the night. Yes. She was probably sedated. Good evening, Mary. Um, How are you? Um, well? Did you sleep tonight? I'm sorry, I should introduce myself. My name is Bella. Hello, Bella. We've, my friends and I, we've come here to talk to you about something that may be a little bit difficult. Do you feel up for that? Yes? Is that all right? Very good. Now, this is Mr. Curtis. Good day. Hello. This is Detective Montague. Evening. This is Ms. Baldwin. And we just have some questions, and we think you would be the very best person to help. So we're wondering, it does involve your time with Stephen? At the name of Stephen, she flinches visibly. I'm sorry, I know this is very difficult and I, I don't want to upset you. <laughs> In your time under his influence and associated with his cult. Religious group, cult. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you. With his cult, we want to understand your experience. We want to understand 
the goings on. We believe was, you've was, connected it was, to. It was horrible. A crime. It was horrible. It was a waking nightmare. We were forced to work long hours on the farm. And we never had enough to eat. And Stephen lived in luxury, always surrounded by the pretty young women. And I was one of them until I grew too old for him. And I was sent to the fields. And, 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 then, and, then, and, then, I, and then I fell pregnant. And, I, and then I had to leave. I, I, I couldn't stand to see my child grow up in, with all that madness and darkness. Where is your child now? If you don't mind me asking. Sorry, he, he's, being, he's, he's being cared for by, by some very kind people. But Stephen wanted, Stephen wanted to take my son and expose him to that, that, that horrible statue in his room and, 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 and horrible dark things. And, and, and uh, that statue, it watches us all the time. It watches, it watches us, it watches us, it watches us, it watches us. And the doctor starts to step in a little bit. If you would like to make a charm roll, or perhaps a uh, fast talk if you wish, or a relevant uh, social skill. Charm? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Excellent. Exactly 50. Excellent. Uh, in fact, was that double zero five? Yes. That's yeah. actually a five. That's an extreme success. Oh. Uh, well my, done. My. <laughs> she calms down at your, your soft speaking at her. She calms down a great deal. And says, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It was just, it was horrible. It was horrible. It was, it was a, he'd taken my son and, and kept him in his room with the statue and I was left in the, in the sleeping quarters and there was a stormy night and the, the lamps kept blowing out. I remember it was dark and it was loud and, and then a gust of wind blew open the, the tent roof and I, I, knew, I knew that was my only chance. I had, I had to save my son so I ran into his house and I, I ran through his bedroom and I took my son and I ran away and I, I ran and I ran in the rain and the wind and I, I walked and I crawled and so many miles, I, I don't even know, but I, I couldn't let him take my boy to that thing, the, the, the three-lobed eye. It sees you, nothing is hidden, nothing is hidden. Even here I find it, I feel it, it searches for me, it watches me, it never stops, it never lets me go. It, it again starts to You're safe. make another charm roll, please. Still uh, a success. success. You managed to calm her down again. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it's, just, it's very difficult for me. I'm working on it, the doctors are helping me. I'm better now. I can talk longer now. Thank you very much, Mary. Thank you. You've been very, very helpful. I wish you the most ease and speed in your recovery. Thank you. She reaches out and grabs your hand. It's a demon. It's a demon. They, they worship it at the mountain. Stephen's going to... He's going to do something horrible. He's going to do something really horrible. He wants to ascend. And it helps him. Nyalathotep. Mary. Mary. <laughs> and she starts completely losing her breath. You've lost her. She's God, gone. that's dramatic, isn't it? <laughs> the doctor starts to, to bundle her up and uh, instructs the orderlies to take her away and says, look, I, I understand. I, this is all you're going to get from her. Now, please, she needs to get her rest. Please go. Thank you, doctor. Well, this is much worse than I, I thought. I know, we have to go to Mount Moroney. We do. <laughs> um, <laughs> does the name Nyathotep mean anything to you? Nyathotep. Yes, that one. Yeah. Make an occult roll. That is uh, 49. I believe your occult is 50 from memory. Uh, it's 70. 70, excellent. Um, now, uh, with, a, with a roll of, of a success there, the name Nyalathotep rings a bell. Rings a bell. It rings a bell. This is this is a similar sort of old god to that to that strange pagan ritualistic spiritualism religion that uh, that, that that statue reminded you of. You don't know the specifics. This is not your region of occult knowledge, but yes, definitely it's a name you've heard before. A and what you do remember of the name is that whatever it is, it's a it's a really horrible horrible thing. No no decent person would worship a god like this. I'll tell you what I do know. 
It does vaguely remind me of the same sort of horrible pagan sort of thing that we were looking at. I'm just going to have some scotch altar. while you drink. Yeah. All right. Using your powers of deduction, Using my are ideas. they the same thing? I'm not sure they're the same thing, except they're really, really quite similar. It's, I'll tell you, it's just not the sort of thing that you'd want to worship. This really is quite, quite demonic. I see. Mm. So, off to the mountain? Off to the mountain! Hey! Off to the mountain we go! <laughs> Are we getting back in the carriage? We're getting... Yes. yes. Unless you want to run. Uh, <laughs> um, mm. Before we go... No. Is anyone else... You just killed the worry. <laughs> you can have a conversation in the coach perhaps as well. They were all excited and you've ruined it. Go on, gentlemen. Sorry. Have the conversation <laughs> in the coach. You can't play if the carriage is stopped. <laughs> alright, alright, we'll get in the carriage. We'll get in the carriage. We're 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 in the carriage. <laughs> yes. Look. So it's about a half hour ride out to Mount Warren here. Have you got time to talk? Are you worried? Yes. Uh, about what? Yes. What we're about to find. Well, it's all shadows. I saw it in a vision, so um, it's not—it's it, no physical form that I, from you know. Are you sure you're okay? I'm not okay because it's absolutely not how I would have thought I would actually uh, say those words. <laughs> um, being a non-believer. Tell me, how does crow taste? <laughs> 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 Very good. <laughs> well, thanks. Um, can you remember anything about this thing, this entity? Um, any idea what we might find there? What we might be looking for if they have an altar or something? This isn't really my specific area of expertise within the occult. All I can tell you, Constable, is that if you believe in God, I would start praying. Mm. Mm. That's not at all ominous. <laughs> Now, as you're having this conversation, <laughs> it takes approximately half an hour for half you to hour. reach out towards Mount Warrenhip. So it is indeed approaching midnight. Uh, it is approximately a quarter of an hour to the hour of midnight as you do approach uh, Mount Warrenhip. You do see uh, there is evidence of uh, a recent train, not a you know, steam train, as in a, a train of coaches or carriages or wagons of some kind, traveling on this road ahead of you towards Mount Warrenhip. Uh, and you suspect perhaps that was indeed the cultists. Uh, very odd for a group to have traveled this way so late at night. Mm. As you do approach uh, the, the viewing platform, the, the platform, the viewing area of Mount Warren Hip, where you get a lovely view of the surrounding uh, areas. So the top, we've made our way up to the top? More or less, yes. Okay. Is this where the, the other coaches have gone? Yes, you're following along uh, that same road. What you see in the distance as you approach, once you come through a clearing uh, in the trees, is there are approximately 44 cultists standing around in a flattened area of the grassy field on this mountain, in this, in this large clearing. They are all on their knees in orderly numbered rows facing an altar with their hands like this prostrate up and down. Almost mechanical, unnatural movement. They seem to be humming or chanting something but you can't quite make it out at this distance and in front of them all there is a large wooden altar with a book open upon it you can't quite tell from this distance but you might assume that this is indeed the skin covered book and Stephen himself stands at that altar his arms outstretched his face toward the heavens and there seems to be from the altar from Stephen a beam of light rising to the heavens <laughs> as he chants very, very loudly. And you hear him chanting, La Nyalatatep, La Magni Deceptor, La Tibi Quise Homonem Facit, Et Descendit Ad Regna Mortalium, Ascendat Stephen Ad Divinitatum. And he repeats this phrase over and over again. I know this. This is Latin. I speak Latin as well. You may both make a roll of language other Latin. <laughs> I'm going to spend some luck points. Mm -hmm. Seven to be. Correct. Maybe I will. No, actually, never mind. No, I fail. <laughs> I'm trying to find where my translation of this is. I may have accidentally oh. deleted it. Oh, no. no. It is essentially a chant... Uh, that's quite annoying. 
<laughs> I'll see if I can find it. Basically, oh no, sorry, it's right here. Nyarlathotep, O great deceiver, la to thee that maketh itself man and descendeth unto the realm of mortals, ascend Stephen to godhood. And he repeats this again and again. And as you get closer, you actually see that Stephen sees you approach. He still seems to be within a, some sort of trance, his eyes almost glowing from the distance mm -hmm. as his neck snaps down to look at where you approach. And he points one gnarled hand in your direction. And from the altar spring two balls of light that fly out into the air, spiral around him up, and then head directly towards you. What do you do? Should we get back Dodge. in the carriage? Run! <laughs> run! We run! No? Run! We're here for that book! <laughs> Coward! Get the damn book! Coward! <laughs> okay. You are perhaps a hundred meters away from the altar. I Those two dodged. spirits are hurtling towards you. You have time to have an action each before they reach your position. You can use that action to approach further. You can use the action to run away. You could try shooting them if you like, see if that does anything. Does it look like he's going to do anything, balls of light? You don't know. The cultists, you will note, have made no acknowledgement of your presence whatsoever, mm. only Stephen. Quickly, let's get down on our knees and in, in the same position. He that's knows we're here, do. I don't think that's going to work. Um, I would like to dodge mm -hmm. these balls of light. That would happen in combat, so okay. uh, we don't need to worry about them until we're in an attack. Uh, but you can you can sort of say that you ready yourself, and I'll give you an advantage. Um, can I yell? Yell what? Um, Stephen, this is the Ballarat Police. <laughs> Stop what you are doing now. I don't know what act this comes under, but I'm pretty sure it's illegal. You have stolen property, and we'd like to return it. He, the after you say that, he ignores you and just looks up and continues chanting. I did my best. Nice. Laura, <laughs> please make a power roll. Yes. Uh, I can't see them. That one and uh, thank you. That's, That's not, it. not it. This one. That one. Thanks. Even the keeper can't find the right ones. No, I know. Uh, power is... It's 76. You only just failed. Would you like to uh, spend some luck or do you want yeah, to take the loss? Yeah, six luck points. No, you only need to... You're oh, 70. Yes, you would have to spend six luck points. Yep, all right. Um, We're going to get lucky. Very well. Now is the time. It's done. Nothing happens. There are still two actions left to do. That was your action, by the way. Sorry. Oh, that was it. I yep. spent some luck points. Yes. Oh. There's a reason for it. You'll oh, find okay. out if you fail a power roll. <laughs> do I myself, do I know any incantations in Latin to help stop these spirits? Make an occult roll. I wonder to myself. <laughs> uh, 34. That is a regular success. A regular success. Uh, you shout something in Latin and it has no effect. Blast. Yes. <laughs> It doesn't I appear think to, to have myself. Had an what did you shout, by the way? Uh, Stop. Stop. <laughs> 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 I think to myself, and I say out loud, we need to get the book away from Stephen. We need to interrupt this somehow. And I'm going to start running towards running Stephen. Running towards Stephen? Towards him. Outstanding. <laughs> Very well. There are two spirits that will now act. And then it will be back to your turn. Now, the way combat works in Call of Cthulhu is it's by dex order. So whoever has the highest dex goes first, so on and so forth. There is a house rule where you can roll for that. I don't think we'll worry about that tonight because it's a single event. Um, I have 70. 70? 60. 60. 55. Very well. So I will say the order. James, mm. Clara, Bella, and then Detective Thomas Montague in that order. But first, the spirits. The first spirit reaches, excuse me, one, two, three, four, where's my D4? Reaches you first, James Curtis. Oh. And the spirit <laughs> hurtles towards you bodily. I screeched at Terrible. the top of my lungs. <laughs> now, James Curtis, could you please make a dodge roll for me using your dodge stat? Bottom right should be there. Uh, where? Ah, uh, down yes. there, wonderful. Uh, an 84? You fail. <laughs> the spirit <laughs> collides with you. Ah. And you feel it. You feel almost a, a, an incredibly intense heat in your chest. And I need you to make a power roll for me, please. Good lord, is it hot out here? <laughs> uh, yes, that is a hard success. A hard success? Mm. 
You are not possessed at this current time. I don't feel possessed at you, the current time. You connect. Like you collect all of your willpower and and with your knowledge of spiritualism and and spiritual strength, you expel this spirit from your body. Be gone, demon. The second spirit comes That's to you. Glasses, not what? a demon. I'm prepared. Now I would Be like you to make a power roll. Oh, sorry. Would you like to dodge? Make a dodge roll first. Uh, all right. Let's dodge. So it's um, bottom right down here. Thank you. Both of these? Yes. To get under that? Yes. It's difficult. Oh, and you almost did it. Can Would you I... like to spend some yes. luck? Yes, luck it up. Very well. <laughs> the second spirit hurtles towards you, oh. Ms. Baldwin, and you dive bodily out of the way, and you even manage to hold onto your top hat as you do so. <laughs> and the spirit flies past you and turns around and heads back towards the party. You all now may act again in the order which I described. So first... Mr. James Curtis. Unbeknownst to everybody here, I've actually had a cane this whole time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I just realised we've got stuff. Yes, you yes. have canes. We've got Lord. canes. I spent all this time writing your inventory for you. I brought we my prop. There we well, go. Uh, congratulations to you. Well, I, I wield my cane like a sabre and I'm going to run up to one of the spirits and have at thee. Very well. Make an attack roll. Please, so it would be a brawl roll with your... Uh, oh, 1d6 per... No, no, the brawl first to see if you hit it. Oh. So what did you get there? Where's brawl? It'll be Where's uh, my glass? around about fighting <laughs> brawl, I think, around there. Let me have a look here. Uh, Maybe I should have studied this sheet before we started. Oh, there so it's is. Uh, yeah, here. it's up here. Fighting. Fighting Sorry, brawl. Fighting. So 30. 30. Uh, no. <laughs> so what happens... Uh, I'll be honest with you, it would have been ineffectual anyway. Oh. You swing the cane at the spirit and your cane goes right through the spirit and when it comes out the other end, it's coated in a viscous, dark, slightly acidic fluid. Ah. Ah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> your turn next? Yes, my yes. turn. Your turn. <laughs> can I, um, uh, can you... Uh, give us, uh, like, uh, where we're standing. So How we're standing away? here this way, say. The cultists are all over there, perhaps by about 30 metres, the large group. Yep. Stephen is about, now. by now, about 90 <laughs> metres in that direction. Right, so throwing a knife at Stephen is probably not going to cut it. Uh, probably not, no. Uh, your arm? 90 you metres. can charge towards him and pretty much close the gap within this action. I'm going to do that. Yes? Yes. Excellent. Uh, however, that would be your action. That's my action. How far have I made with my run? To put you the used your last action to run. I did. So you are within, I would say, about 20 metres of Stephen. If you would like to charge him or do anything like that or whatever you'd like. In fact, what would you like to do? I shouldn't I put I want to get the book. You want to go for the book. And remove it from the altar Very well. and throw it. I'm going to say for that, uh, make a dex roll. Yes, very, very close. Very, very close. Just a regular success? Just a regular success. What is your dex stat? <laughs> 60. Roll again. Ooh. 41. You managed to get the book. <gasps> yeah. hey. 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 Huzzah! We got the book! <laughs> can, we, can we see this? Yes. Yes. Whoa, she got the book! The, second, the, yes! the oh, no. second you lay your hands upon the book, Stephen, who has been looking up like this the whole time, his eyes snap down towards you. And he reaches out to grab the book also. Oh, no. And he manages to get hold of the book as well as you. And now make a strength roll, please. Oh no. Oh no. Weren't they far apart from the books? No. He was, he was stood right there. I'm one, one off. Right. I'm going to use one point of luck. You certainly will. Oh, you no. are quite the lucky lady, aren't you? I'm running out. <laughs> <laughs> you manage to wrench the book out of Stephen's hands and the pillar of light heading up from the altar dissipates. Stephen looks up at you and screams an unearthly scream and then his eyes also roll into the back of his head and he falls over backwards. <laughs> you notice now... It sounded painful. Ooh, as you look upon been, him, yeah. he was... I forgot to mention this earlier, a bit of an important detail. He was wearing that mask from the statue within his uh, oh. horrible three-eyed mask. No, the statue falls yeah. off of his face and you see a horribly wretched, twisted face. Not, not literally deformed, but as though he has gnarled every muscle in, in rage and hatred as he begins to convulse upon the ground. 
speaking gibberish, speaking in tongues. Some phrases of Latin you may rec uh, recognize, some other horrible abyssal language, but he is rendered harmless. Those of you standing around noticed that the cultists who had been praying were prostrate upon the ground, seemed to be awakening in some way, coming to their senses, collapsing upon the ground, some of them helping each other up, but almost insensible. As the hideous mask falls from Stephen's face, it is revealed the true madness that grips his mind. His cultists, now free from his control, fall to the ground, weeping. The sky is clear, and the next day, you know, dawn will break on a new day. Stephen, over the next day, is brought into custody, taken away, screaming in madness and utter loss. The ritual book is confiscated and locked away again for safekeeping at the Ballarat Mechanics Institute, ensuring that no other misguided individuals can attempt such a catastrophic event again. Over time, most of the cultists recover from their mental trauma, though they will bear the scars of their time under Stephen's control for the rest of their days. As for Stephen, his mind will remain shattered, and he is a shadow of the man he once was. His days will be spent in a padded cell where his screams echo through the halls of the Aradale Lunatic Asylum in Arad Ararat, a reminder of the horrors he inflicted upon those that he manipulated. The only question left for you all is what will you tell the public? What will you tell William Bailey? And indeed, if you will ever speak of these events again. You managed to save the world to fight another day. And that's the end of our adventure. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everybody. Amazingly, we even finished with a few minutes to spare, which is lovely, incredible. And may I again thank all of our help from, from all of these wonderful banners behind you. I won't read everybody again. The Drongo and the Crow for their amazing music. As they play us out as well, folks. Thank you very much to you both. Thank you to our players here. Uh, thank you to the library, to the Ballarat Library, to the Town Hall, to, to Guff, to Chaosium. Uh, to our players for being here and, and having a lot of fun with us. Uh, to to Kiralee for helping thank us with you. stage thank management. You, David for his research. Thank Excellent. You, thank you very much. And if we would like to, we'll I'll hand over to David. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you. That was all I have response to that. We all have for each of you, thanks to our sponsor Guff, a hundred dollar voucher. Ooh, thank you. Yeah, for our actors and their wonderful work tonight. Really? Thank you. Um, wow. Ooh. Thanks, Guff. Uh, Guff. Wonderful musical accompaniment, Drongo and the Crow. I have a very nice bottle of wine. And indeed, there is a cake in the fridge for you as well, which we will procure when we do. Cake and <laughs> wine, Lovely. amazing. Yes. Wow. And Thank you. Thank you, everyone else. Uh, everyone, I really hope you enjoyed the story tonight. and. I hope you enjoyed the threading through actual history and the fictional works of H.P. Lovecraft. Thank you very much. You. It's up to you, you can. Yeah. Um, may I just say something really quickly? Um, uh, I just want to thank everyone for sitting here for uh, two hours plus. I think that was awesome of you. Um, it certainly helps us here uh, when you do that. Um, if you want to sit through some of our other shows, we've got two more. Uh, we have uh, a Magic Lantern show, which is on Saturday, uh, which is down in the basement of the Ballarat Mechanics Institute. And then we're using our Magic Lantern Don't go playing with again. any books. No books. No. <laughs> uh, but while you're there, you can actually go and have a look in the, the, uh, the Heritage Reading Room and have a look at the exhibition they have on, um, which is plant specimens from around Victoria. Um, they've just had uh, that book on that paperwork, which has had a lot of conservation work done on it. Go and see for yourselves. And then our next play using a magic lantern is the very last day of Ballarat Heritage Festival. Um, and that will be at the Ballarat Municipal uh, Observatory um, where, uh, at 4 p.m. where we're going to talk about the mystery airships phenomenon that um, have happened in Ballarat. Mm. Um, we would love your feedback. We'd love you to join Tales from Rat City. Um, and thanks again for coming. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you, everybody. Excellent. Excellent.